All right. Welcome to another BS Sessions, man. Uh, we got some guests here. Uh, Charles, introduce the guests, man. Last uh, week, we got Andy as our uh, center square, Andy Rodriguez, Black Spinner Circle, and uh, Al Horta, my boy, fellow uh, 10 arm enthusiast. And uh, <laughs> I'm, of course, Matt. <laughs> and uh, we got Jerry and, and you, as always. But well, why um, can't I be a 10 arm and a nine arm enthusiast? Come on, man. <laughs> I don't. We'll, we'll call you 19, 19 arms. Then. I'm 19 know. arms. <laughs> All right, man. Be, be, today's episode is we're making our um, ultimate 11 song Southern rock album. Uh, I don't think any of you guys picked the Rolling Stones, but uh, you could have because they do have a couple Southern rock albums. But before we get into that, before we get into the bullshit, we have some people in the group that gave us uh, some picks. We got uh, Ali Ishmael. He put Boogie No More by uh, Molly Hatchet. Greg Noggle, Give Me Three Steps by Skinner. Brian Bellows, The Black Crows, My Morning Song. Tuesday And Tuesday's Gone, he picked two songs uh, from um, Skinner. Todd Ferguson, Call Me The Breeze. Leonard Skinner, Yes I Know, J.J. Kale wrote it, but he picked it. That's what he said. Uh, and then Whiskey Man, Mo Molly Hatchet. Uh, Fox Hunt picked uh, Blackfoot. Uh Let's see. Little Feet by Willen. Hold on, Loosely 38 Special. Uh, shit, I fucked up some people's names. I'm sorry, guys. I fucking thought I had this. Bonnie Jean Kropa, Co Coppler said anything by the Black Crows or Leonard Skinner. Jeff Goss picked Ed's of Sundown, Ed's Edge of Sundown by Danny Joe Brown. I guess he's the Molly Hatchet singer. Uh, Keith Ascraft picked Can't You See? Both versions. Um, Hank Williams Jr. and the Marshall Tucker Band. Wayne Marshall. Noon. Wayne Noon from Wet Rat Salad said none. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Can't you pick a fucking Southern Rock song, you bitch? You don't even upload our audio podcast anymore. What the fuck, bitch? <laughs> and then Bill Algy, Sleeping with Dogs by Black Blackberry Smoke. Nate Bushy picked Flirting with Disaster by Mo Molly Hatchet. Uh, I think your wife, uh, Andy, picked Keep Your Hands to Yourself, Molly Rodriguez. The yeah, that's satellites. In the house. yeah Jane, James West picked Gotta Be uh, Saturday Night Special by Leonard Skinner. Brian Day picked On the Hunt, Leonard Skinner. Roger Norris picked Gimme. Is Molly, is, is Molly telling uh, Andy that? Or no, that's what she keep told her hands me. Here, so. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's what I told you. That's the theme oh, song. The <laughs> <laughs> and then Roger Doris picked Give Me Back My Bullets. Eric Arnsby Jordan, a guest has been on his show, Simple Man Leonard Skinner. The fuck, guys? There's more Southern rock bands than fucking Leonard fucking Skinner. I, I know they're the most popular one. But fuck, come on, get into some fucking minutia here, man. You know, fucking <laughs> Leonard Skinner, you motherfuckers. Now subscribe to the fucking YouTube page, man. You're getting Charles pissed at that. I think he's going to talk about that later. So I don't know. I'm just guessing, but uh, let's get into some BS, man. Henry Cavell is no he he had, he said he was back because the studio told him to say it, but then they got some new heads of the DC studios. Now he's not returning to uh, play Superman. But James Gunn says they want him to be in the universe somewhere, just not a Superman. What do you guys think about that? Let's start with you, Andy. Um, I never saw the Superman with him in there. The last Superman I saw was Superman 3 was with Christopher Reeve. Oh, no. no, I really don't have an opinion. What about you, uh, Al? <laughs> I never saw it with him either. <laughs> so. uh, you guys suck. Man of Steel <laughs> rules, man. But I do want to watch it because I know they're on uh, HBO Max, and I want to check them out. Yeah, he's a, he's yeah, I never got to see I never saw it, man. So, I, yeah, just, I'll, I'll, I'll see it, though, one day. But I haven't seen it yet. Charles, you're the one who showed me that. So what do you think about that? I am not upset because I don't think he was bad Superman. I think he was just giving crap movies to work with. So there's a universe that needs to be re rebooted badly. Like I said before, if Justice League has to be made into a five-hour film to make it good, that's a problem. Batman v Superman was trash. Um... 
But I mean, Man of Steel wasn't terrible, but I just I didn't like the way they went with the story. Again, I don't think it's his fault. Same way that I didn't think it was Ben Affleck's fault or the actors. I just think some of the movies they were given to work with were. So, All right. Of course, they have to relaunch with with somebody else. I mean, it's, it's identifiable with that. They did that with uh, Brandon Roush too. Yeah. I liked Brandon Wa- Ralph's Superman Return. I thought that was pretty I, good. I didn't mind it either. They I tried mean, to make him too much like Christopher Reeve. Yeah, but that was a seek. That was actually a sequel to Superman Two. If you if they they explained Superman, yeah, I know. Sequel to Superman. He like went to Krypton for a long time. Yeah, he was looking for his planet like and shit. I yeah. thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, but like the, yeah, but there was a Superman Three, the one with Richard Pryor. Yeah, but yeah, but they yeah, wanted to ignore it. They want to ignore that one. That one was <laughs> it was that, better than Superman Four, <laughs> the Quest for Peace. Yeah, that was but, pretty uh, terrible. What do you nah, think, man? Uh, Henry was a good. He was a good Superman. I, I'm kind of more curious what they're going to do with uh, Gal Gadot. They're going to they keep already, her. Get they already her. asked her a third movie. That's what I mean. Are they going to try to keep her? Or well, they're probably going to keep her. Well, I thought probably, she played Wonder Woman pretty well. Actually, she looked good in the outfit too. Yeah. <laughs> She Not as good as Linda well. Carter. <laughs> well, nobody can feel that outfit like she can. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So then we get to, uh, I just need to tell people, uh, I posted today in uh, Freeform and uh, this group to ask people, what is my favorite uh, Kiss song? I, I just got to say, Aaron Camaro, you're fucking hilarious, dude. Read my body. <laughs> I put a Will Ferrell fucking thing say we are laughing <laughs> on his comment. But I, I the comments I was getting was hilarious. And then um my favorite kiss song is I told this to all you guys on mm-hmm. all the podcasts, everything is what is a hundred thousand years from the platinum edition, kiss platinum edition. That's always been my favorite kiss song from that edition. You know, I love that fucking song, but uh I think uh you will get into yours later. Um, and then we talk about Rex Brown has COVID of uh, Pantera. Pantera. What do you think about that, uh, Andy? Well, COVID's going up again, probably during the Thanksgiving season. Um, over at work, we ran out of the COVID medicine. Within the past three days, we went through about 80 boxes. And um, all of the medicine we're giving right now is all I want to say COVID related, but colds and symptoms like that. So that's not a big surprise. It's been happening after major holidays. So it's going to happen again during Christmas, New Year's. So it's just going to keep on going. Well, I think it's mainly the flu that's going around more than yeah. COVID and RSP yeah. or something, whatever that lung thing, what's going on. No, but we're giving away a lot of those COVID medications yeah. for five day courses. Yeah, but Rex Brown not isn't it going to play with them? They're going to go on because uh, they need to make that that Fedia, right? So what do, you, what do you think about that, Al? Hey, you got sick. COVID's never COVID's never going to go away, dude. No. It's going to be it's, it's just another strain of the flu that's going to stay around. I mean, they should just lift the fucking they should just lift the fucking pandemic already for, in my opinion, because it's never going to go away. It's just another form of a flu, you know. Um, yeah, he got sick. He took himself off the tour. I mean, that's nothing new. I mean, I've, all these bands have been doing this shit now. And it's everybody's replaceable in bands nowadays. So, you know, Except is it Pantera? <laughs> it's Phil it's Phil and Friends, dude. <laughs> yeah, Pantera and Friends, yeah. Yeah, but the thing yeah. the, the thing is, man, I saw Ario Speedwagon with their guitar player. He had COVID. They went acoustic. They didn't bring in the guitar tech. I was pissed. I want to see some fucking- <laughs> yeah, but like a couple of, but like a couple of years ago, or like even a year ago, if someone had COVID in the band or in the camp, they would just shut down production and the whole tour. Yeah. The whole, yeah. The, the, they would cancel shows. It wouldn't yeah, even be exactly. you know, now it's yeah. just now it's just like, you know, uh have Rex somebody ready off and, you know, to yeah. fill in. Next guy yeah. up. <laughs> Except for our speed wagon. But, uh, Charles, what do you think of that? Well, I hope he has a speedy recovery. And, uh, yeah, I'm with, Al, I'm with Al on that portion. I'm glad that you, you don't hear just 
everything shut down. Everybody, ah, we're getting away yeah. from that. So get uh, if you are a believer in vaxxers, get your vaccine. Yeah, and like Al said, it's just going to be a uh, part of our lives now. It is. I wish people would stop stressing out, man. Uh, just like roll with it, man. Like Steve Winwood says. Uh, exactly. But uh, what do you think about it, Jerry? Stop looking at the game. I mean, what what what, what can I say? I mean, it sucks. People get COVID, man. I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to be around forever. I mean, you know what? I'm so tired of fucking being so fucking politicized. Do what you want. Do what you want. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get vaccinated. Don't get vaccinated, man. Just stop making fucking political, politicizing this fucking thing. I'm tired of hearing about it. I felt it. I felt that way since the beginning, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lost two people that I knew really well to COVID, so it ain't a joke. Um, So, uh, but I'm at the point now, you know what? You get it, you know, when you get sick and you die, I'm sorry to hear that, but that's your choice. So people die from the flu too, bro. I'm not saying that, man. I'm just saying, I mean, this is something that, you know, both of them you can get shots for, man, to help make it better for you. And people just don't want to do it. So, you know, that's your choice, man. I get it now. I'm not upset either way, but man, I'm just tired of politics in general. But every little fucking thing being politicized nowadays, man, just I'm yeah. fucking tired of it. That's not going to go away either. With, I'm a member uh, of the, for- by the way, I'm a member of the forward party now. You can laugh at me all you want. <laughs> Democrats ain't doing shit. Republicans ain't doing shit. All right, so. dude. Now politics. Get out of it. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Cut it off. Oh. Cut it off. Next. <laughs> Next. So um, Ozzy Osbourne said he's never listened to Black Sabbath's Dio albums because it felt like a divorce and it kind of hurt him. He said he liked Dio, but he didn't want to hear them because it hurt him. So what do you think about that, uh, Andy? Well, it's kind of surprising to hear that he's never heard of those two or well, three albums now. Um, that's very um, surprising, but then you can kind of see it. You know, he was hurt that he was let go. He was fired, but then who can blame them of the state that they were at at the time of his firing? I mean, they were all blitzed on something, you know? It's just like Guns N' Roses got rid of Stephen Adler because he was a drug addict. Okay, everybody was drug addicts. Drug addict. <laughs> I guess it all depends on how much he used. And so, you know, I can see Ozzy saying that he was hurt, but I just don't believe that he never heard Heaven and Hell and, um, and, um, geez, and Neon Knight. My, thank you, Mob my, my, my Rules. It's just hard to believe that. I mean, those were massive hits. How can he not hear them? But that was my take on it. What do you think about it, Al? I think I think Ozzy's losing his memory because there was an interview with him a long time ago where he said that he did hear Heaven and Hell and he, that he admitted that it was a great album and uh, that he had to step up his game. Um, it just he just said it wasn't Black Sabbath. That's what he said. Um, so he did hear it. So it's I heard that. Shit. Yeah. I heard that too. So yeah. So what do you think about it, Charles? More evidence, Ozzy should retire. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, uh, Jerry? I mean, Al covered it, man. I, I remember him talking about it all the time, saying he liked it, actually. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's losing his, he's losing his mind, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. I, I agree with all of you guys. I'm going to get into my little rant before we get into some more bullshit. Uh, we got we got a uh, pickle whistler. Uh, hats go off, hats goes off to uh, <laughs> oh jeez. Hats goes off to the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. They coined this phrase. I'm giving them credit. I'll I will send you your five dollars uh, as soon as I can. But uh, the thing is, I'm not gonna say his name because he told me to keep his name out of my fucking mouth. But he said that we jumped the shark when we brought Charles on the show. <laughs> And that we're not what we used to be. And I go, Jerry, I'm going to talk to you. When we started the show, what was our plan? Just to fucking bullshit, talk about shit, get drunk, you know, have fun. And what else? Get other, get a lot of guests. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, we don't want to sit there just fucking jacking each other yeah. off, right? 
I remember what he said. You guys want to just monetize yourself. I'm like, I, I, I would love to be monetized. Yeah, we want, we want to sell out. You know, like Gene Simmons sells. Yes, kids sold out. We sell out every fucking show. <laughs> you know, we want to monetize this fucking who show. Was, who, you don't have to tell me the dude on the, on the show. Tell me later who it was. Well, I, you know who it is, dude. It, it, it's just like, go read the I comments so. on one of the YouTube th- things we did. It's like, this dude, he, 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 he called me ignorant. Because I don't like fucking Taylor Swift. I said, you don't like, <laughs> you don't like Taylor Swift? I don't like Fuck Taylor Swift. You. you know what? But I said, you know what? Just because I don't like her doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. And you know what? You're blocked. Later, dude. <laughs> hey, uh, Mark Mark Dolly, you probably like, because you always say I block everybody. Because I blocked you for five minutes. I blocked Charles for five minutes. You know, I do get a little fucking... Oh, dude, he's, you blocked me like a thousand times. Dude. You blocked me too. So shut the fuck up. We were back and forth. I don't block people. people. I don't block people. You blocked me. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, sir. See, that's what politics does. Me and you because of politics. No shit. That's why I fucking hate them, dude. <laughs> and you started bringing politics up. Well, that's my little rant. You know what? Fuck you. You know who you are. Fucking yes. We we didn't jump the shark. We expanded the show like me and Jerry planned from the beginning to bring people on here because we just don't want to be jacking each other off. You know, we need other opinions. We need other people's perspectives. So fuck off. All right. I prefer to do that. I prefer to jack my own self off. Thank you. (laughs) I didn't know this was that kind of show. (laughs) I wish I was in the first place. Now I'm stuck. (laughs) Uh, Well, shit. Me, Jerry, and uh, Charles are going to... Rock and pot, but uh, homie, don't play butt darts. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> butt darts. What the hell's butt darts? <laughs> butt darts. You don't oh, know what boy. butt darts is? No. How can you know how they stick your dick? Let's not learn today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Let's get to some more BS. Um, we had another rock death uh, every week. Uh, Al posted this. I guess he died on the 13th. I'm going to let Al take this because I really don't know this guy. I don't know that band that much. Uh, Kim Simmons, Al? Yeah, yeah Kim Simmons from uh, Sadway Brown, who's the leader and guitar player. Um, actually, I saw that I'm yeah. friends with Eric Bloom on Facebook from Blue Oyster Cult, and he had posted that. And I was like, shit, man, he died a couple of days ago. So I just I took that picture, reposted it, and... Uh, and yeah, it's that's a shame. I mean, he was up there already in age too. Um, Seventy-five. I remember, uh, yeah, I remember. Um, not too long ago, maybe a year or two ago, um, uh, was a Pete Pardo from Sea Tranquility actually mm-hmm. interviewed him on his uh, channel. No, they, had new, they had a new album out and everything. So um, I was kind of like, I was kind of shocked a little bit to see that he had passed. But I don't know what he passed from though. Um, he had renal cancer. Really, was that? He uh, um, he had renal cancer. It's like stage four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so he, okay. So, okay, renal cancer. So, um, yeah. I mean, I just I saw I saw Eric Bloom post that, so I want to repost and get it out there. Uh, it didn't seem. I mean, Stavro Brown's not in everybody's conscious anyway, but you know, I just want to get it out there for anybody that's a fan of theirs. So, what's I the big saw, hit? I, I know that song Hellbound Train by them. I don't know what else they say. I have that album. That's an album, Hellbound yeah. Train as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. They're good, good, man. Good tune, man. Yeah. They have a Sabbath, they have a Sabbath connection. Um uh one of the vocalists was vocalist for about a week in Sabbath. Um, <laughs> what was the guy's name? Shit. Um, I can't remember now. Ozzy left for the first time. I think it was like in 77 or something. And they got this guy in. Oh, Dave Walker. <laughs> This guy Dave Walker, and he was there for maybe about a month. And there's actually like, uh, um, he cut, they cut a, a version of Junior's Eyes with him, um, with different lyrics, different mel- me- melody, and everything. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. But he was a part of Savo Brown. Savo Brown's had a ton of members in it, in and out. So it's one of those rotating bands. It's there's been so many members. But uh, Dave Walker was a member of them, and he sang for Sabbath for a little while and then that didn't work out and Ozzy came back. So but that that was a little Sabbath connection in that. But uh Kim Simmons, you know, rest in peace. I think and, Kim Sim- I think Kim Simmons has been the constant member, you know, since 
Savoy Brown began until now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he was the only constant guy there. He kept on changing different players around him. Yeah. Um, Savoy Brown was more of a British blues based kind of like in the same kind of like maybe Fleetwood Mac early Fleetwood Mac of the sixties. Um, yeah, with Peter Green, yeah, that type of sound. Yeah, Sa Savoy Brown started like in like in seventy seventy one. Um, I remember um, in the beginning when I first started, well, I wasn't even doing um, podcasting yet, but we were doing a show on um, Black Spinner Circle called um, Drop the Needle, and one of our members um, named Larry Super, no, Larry Sue, um, he wanted to do a Savoy Brown album, and we did, and I was very impressed by it, and, and it led me through a little bit of a rabbit hole of theirs for, for a couple months. It was very good music. And my uncle's a big fan of theirs, too. So I was kind of very, well, well, I've been a little versed in their music. I just, you know, it's good stuff. It's a big loss for for, for people that are fans because they don't have a large fan base, but their fan base is very dedicated to that band. Did you know them, Charles? I know. So hearts, prayers. Condolences to his family and the fans of that band. All right. And then we get to the next BS. Uh, Alice Cooper opening for 19 arm or nine <laughs> arm or 10 arm or whatever it is and crew. <laughs> so what do you think? I'm going to go for Charles on this one, man. Charles, give me your opinion on this. I know you're itching to tell me about this. Absolute horseshit. Absolute horseshit. But, you know, you said I, this was going to be part of my rant, but I'll bring it up. Oh, okay. I'm you said sorry. It, you've said it multiple weeks, months now. The cheap trick should never open for anybody. Yep. Okay. So the Rolling Stones, cheap trick's going to have the Rolling Stones open for them. No. Nah. No. Nah. Paul McCartney. That would never cheap happen, trick. dude. They sh cheap trick saying, should be opening for a like, stream. I think it's, I think it's stupid. <laughs> That yeah. Alice Cooper, I think it's laughable that Alice Cooper, this is like second time he's open for Motley Crue. I saw him open for the crew before. Which I'm more offended about that than with Nine Arm. I mean, <laughs> but whatever. But the you have to be mad at Alice Cooper and or Cheap Trick for accepting those gigs, if anybody else. Exactly. Because they it, they're getting more money that way. They could easily say no. I think Alice is is just way too legendary to take an opening act for that show, but hey, that's on him. I mean, why would I be mad at anybody but him? And the promoters, the promoters. I'm not, I've never been in a band, but I'm guessing the promoters can answer that question. Like, why would I put Alice as an opening act for this group or even with Cheap Trick? You know, so I mean, I kind of feel you, even though I do think there's bands Cheap Trick should open for. I mean, but the mega ones. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not LA Guns. I mean, Cheap Trick. <laughs> no, open. LA Guns would be opening for Cheap Trick. I, I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. But I mean, was, and I don't like it. But again, the artists themselves are the ones that make this choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, I did see Alice Cooper open up for Deep Purple. Now that I see, yeah, I, saw that, that I could see that. Yeah, that was a good show, and Alice Cooper was so good. I was like, man. I hope Deep Purple can live up to, to Alice Cooper, but to be honest, I forgot Alice Cooper was even there after the Deep Purple show. Oh, Deep wow. Purple was just freaking amazing. It was, they were just so great. Did he do and, Child in Time? No. no. <laughs> which, which you will not be amazed by Nine Arm or Motley Crue. I'm pretty sure Alice Cooper will do both of them. Uh, Motley, Motley Crue was okay. Def Leppard was good. I, I, but I like those songs that they did. So. But um, but I but but when I saw Alice Cooper, they did blow out Motley Crue out of the water, and that was on um, the big tour, the um, Goodbye I tour agree. by the Fox tour. Motley Crue. I yeah. even told my wife, "Wow, this is the last time we're ever going to see Motley Crue on stage." Yeah, sure. Uh, you got a lot out of me. How many last times you were going to see Kiss on stage? <laughs> ah, there we go. Apparently. Hey man, apparently, uh, it's not ending. <laughs> All right, man. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Al? About Alice Cooper opening for yeah. them? 
Um, yeah. Well, in, in general, what I'm going coming off of what Charles is saying. Uh, yeah, again, like I think, I think, I think Alice and Cheap Trick and like some of these bands, I think they actually like having that time slot where they get in, fucking do their thing for an hour and get off the stage early and they're done for the night, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're getting older. They don't want that fucking going on stage at nine, nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. You know, going late. You know, because let's face it, they're not, they're not young anymore. You know what I mean? So. Um, I think Cheap Trick, man, they, they're just one of those road dogs that just love, they'll take like pretty much anything, man, you know, and they go in, they do their thing and, and, and they still kick ass, you know, how was that show without Rick Nielsen though? I mean, to me, that's weird. Oh, I think that, they should, I mean, to, to me, not having Rick or even, I mean, obviously you can't really have it without Robin, but I don't know, dude. Well, they already with, with, without either Rick, without either Rick or Robin, dude. I mean, I don't think they should do a show. That's my opinion. But <laughs> well, whatever, that show man. was already postponed from November to December, so they were waiting for Rick, but his doctor said to stay off. And the thing is, dude, uh, Robin's son can fucking shred. And he, I know, I know he's good. I saw, he, I saw him when he was filling in for Tom Peterson. He, when he, Tom Peterson had a had a you know his a heart open heart surgery, or whatever. Yeah. He filled in for that tour. I mean, I mean, he did great, dude. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking him. He's a great, I mean, he looks like he can plug into pretty much any spot there, you know, but uh, I don't know, man. Just not having Rick there, though. I mean, he's he's cheap trick, man. You know, it's like. Yeah, man, the, the personality that, you know, Robin tried to talk, you know, you know, he's not the talker of the band. It was yeah. good. The songs are great. The songs are done great. They kicked ass. <laughs> And uh, he even let his son sing down, and Robin was singing background harmonies with him. His son, what are I, I just got a question? Are they gonna have Cheap Trick 2.0 with all just the family just coming I in? I said that, dude. You have, yeah, I said that a while ago, yeah, dude. Yeah. Because when I saw Cheap Trick, you know, like a year ago or over a year ago, um, even Rick on stage made a joke. He's like, Oh, it's gonna get to a point where me and Robin we could just stay home and. Have, have our kids like go out and 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 tour for us and dude i'm telling you man it's like the, the that's the model that's going to go forward bro i mean these these bands are going to morph into no member no original member bands anymore and just keep going man it's just going to be a brand name that just keeps touring dude you know like the four tops the temptations all that type of shit for hard rock it's going to happen man i'm or telling black, you mark black, my words blackfoot foreigner at least foreigners cutting it cutting it off you know, you know. Uh, um, yeah they're not gonna cut it off well they said it's their final tour i got tickets for 25 they're bucks. Gonna, i'm good they're not gonna stop oh um, now was this just a rumor or, or or was this really gonna happen like the beetle kids were gonna get together like like um like um ringo star's son and and sean lennon and, and paul mccartney's son no, that's, that's not gonna happen no, that's and not gonna happen Harrison. But but cheap trick, man. You got Dax already playing drums. You got Ro uh Robin Sanderson up there singing lead, and he sounds just like Robin. You know, he's really good. Down was amazing when he I when he when he sang that, man. I was like, damn, that's like Robin 2.0 up there. You know, you know, if family members take over the band, it's not like Kiss where you bring all these scabs and if family, if it's gonna be a family band like the Osmonds, man, go for it. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't go in for that. At least Kiss has. Yeah, listen, Andy, Andy, and Mark, everybody. Like we might not go for it, but as time marches on and we drop off, you know, they're they're making a whole new a whole new generation of fans discovers this music. They're not gonna know fucking oh whatever happened to Rick Nielsen or whatever happened. They, they, might, right. they might maybe read up on the history a little bit, but right. they're gonna go out and watch these bands because of songs. That's just That's the bottom true. line, dude. Well, why is that guy with a so, funny? <laughs> yeah. Rick Nielsen rules, dude. Did you ever watch that movie with him, Disorderlies? The no. Fat Boys movie. I'm that. trying. I'm trying to find it. Rock and vodka, man. They don't. Sell I it. haven't seen that in a long time, hey, dude. You could have been an investor in his rock and vodka. You know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have money. Okay, but uh, what do you, did you? What do you think about that, Jerry? Since we're in nah, the man, it, it's it's cool if they want to do that, but you know, I would think you know, like like Wolfie, he's trying to make his own thing, kind of. But they'd probably make their own thing, you know. I don't know. Uh, it might work. It might not work. I, Al's right. What he says, who knows? He could bring in you know younger fans, or you know, 
legacy keeps on going. So, uh, you know, I don't know what to think about it. So either way, I'm good with it. Well, I, uh, just to bring it up, I saw Wasp and Armored Saint on the final uh, date at the freaking uh, Wiltern in L.A. I got, when I saw Armored Saint, the second date of the concert with Wasp, freaking Armored Saint brought it up another level <laughs> on this last fucking concert. John Bush was on fire. The band was kicking ass. I think Wasp cut a couple songs out of their set. They were a little shorter than they were the first time I saw them. But Blackie was good. I liked the concert. It was entertaining. We found seat. We had fucking floor, floor standing room. We were fucking old. We found seats by the bar. And we were sitting in the back watching it on a fucking... I was getting whiskey. I was fucked up, dude. I even fucking went to Tommy's, dude. I backed into a pole. Got a little dent on the back of my car. I was fucked up. I, I kept, I, we drank in the car. We fucking smoked. And then fucking I had a couple whiskeys because the bartender was hot. So I kept buying whiskeys from her. But I was okay. <laughs> Luckily went to Tommy's. I got some food. We sat there for about 20 minutes and I got good. But uh, fucking hey, that was a great show, man. I want, I fucking, um. Armored Saint, dude. They they shouldn't be opening for anybody. They should have. Wasp should have opened for Armored Saint. Even though Wasp was amazing, I loved it. It was great. Armored Saint's just on another level than any. I think other. Armored. I think Armored Saint's better than Wasp. They Wasp are. Yeah. Maybe back in the day, maybe Wasp was a little edgier above them, but now Armored Saint's just a different animal. I'm sorry you didn't see them with John, uh, Al. You know, you saw. Yeah, him. I didn't. Ask I didn't him. see him with him now. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. John's just like, "Come on, motherfuckers!" You know, he's fucking getting the audience fucking rip going. He's like, he's got better stage presence than Wa than Blackie. Blackie's on that fucking monster fucking thing. You can't even see his face half the time. <laughs> but you know what? I like Blackie because he's honest. So fuck. But uh, let's get into the. That's the bullshit, man. We're done with the bullshit, right? Oh, wait. No, Charles, you got your rant. Yeah, I already kind of ranted, but I, I, my rant now is on myself because uh, you put something about what's well, my favorite Kiss song. Wrong answers. And I had to literally think, good God, I don't even know what my own favorite Kiss song is. Yeah, I couldn't tell you either. Well, mine is. Believe, it or, believe it or not. I said I'm it on there, man. I said it was bang bang you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's a great one. Uh, you know what? I mean, I guess I'll try. And uh, the it's makeup tough. era, I'll go with Cold Gin, probably off of Life. I just love, I just love, love, love it. And then uh, it's like a glove off Lick It Up. I think is from the non makeup era. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there's so many Kiss songs I love. Unlet, not Bang Bang You, not anything on Crazy, <laughs> Read my not mind. anything on Hot in the Shade. What does Mark Dolly but, love? Uh, he likes Burn Bitch Burn. He always wants. Yeah, to yeah, poor thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I actually, especially dude, I actually classic, like that song too. <laughs> the real Kiss. Not bad. I, I don't hate it. I don't really love it. I don't hate it too, but I I just give him shit because the fucker always tries to say, hey, look, I got this news. Dude, I already know that shit. Stop telling me <laughs> stuff I already know. He's just he's he he likes the freaking he's he likes to try to get us going, you know. He thinks he's our, our assistant. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark Dolly, we love you, dude. You know, but fuck off. No, I'm joking. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I have. I guess those would be my two because I they're tied. I, I kind of consider the two eras, different eras of the band. I have no favorite scab songs. All of those suck. Um, but I don't hate Psycho Circus. I'm probably one of those weirdos that don't hate that album. And Journey of a Thousand Years is another one I like a lot. So I don't hate it. I just, like, think, I just think it's I don't think it's overrated. It yeah, could have been like half of the, I think half of the album is good, and then yeah, it could have been great if we all wrote on it. You know, everybody <laughs> likes Monster though. Everybody says Monster. I like Monster. No, I, no, I don't like Monster, so I disagree. But I, I didn't. I didn't care for Sonic Boom, but I like Monster. Sonic Boom is really bad. I, it was probably a little better than Sonic Boom, but I just can't get into the Scab albums. I just can't do it. But 
uh, but really, Psycho Circus was the original Scab album. So exactly, I mean, yeah. It's just they lied to us about mm-hmm. it. So why I still like them so much, I don't know. With their <laughs> legacy, I have no idea. But I'm a very forgiving soul when it comes to because I may because they made a live. Hell yeah, I don't know, but I just love them. So it's really hard. I'm more of an albums guy with them, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm always an albums guy, dude. It, it's like I hate it when I'm shuffling shit on my I- iPhone, and fucking uh, living loving maid gets like uh, goes to doesn't go to heartbreaker, <laughs> or heartbreaker doesn't go to living loving maid. I'm yeah. like, Fuck it, or we will rock you doesn't go yeah. to year of the champions. It's like this, like, yeah. What the? Ah, like, I gotta go like, back and like, listen. Uh... Like feeling that way in any time by journey, yeah. I know it's, it's like yeah. I can't handle it, man. <laughs> it's just like shuffles good sometimes, but sometimes I just gotta listen to the albums. Now you but know what sometimes... the worst is? The worst is sticks par- the rock in the paradise. They'll play that little short version. Oh yeah, the and then <laughs> cut it off and count that as a song. You know, I know. <laughs> I you know Aaron Camaro, Decibel Keep, the fucker. He sits there and fucking. Gets his shit like he puts it together as one song, so it doesn't skip on his iPod. And I'm like, motherfucker, how much time do you have? <laughs> I'm going, I'm not gonna sit there and splice them together, <laughs> so it doesn't do that. <laughs> He's talking about that on the Metallica uh, best and worst of Metallica today. I go, really? <laughs> he said that before too, and I'm like, damn. But uh. Well, I, we still have some more bullshit. Uh, we can't leave without talking about the the Lost Quiet Riot song. Did you listen to that, Al? Yeah, I did. It was actually I was pleasantly surprised with it. It's actually a pretty good song, man. The video is pretty uh, emotional, actually. Like it seeing, is. Yeah. It was. Part seeing, one. Uh, Frankie in there and and, and Kevin and stuff. And, um, I, I was I, no, dude. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised with the song. It's a I think it's a pretty damn good song, you know. So, I guess they're gonna put it on a a reissue of one of their albums or something. I don't, I don't remember. But um, that's kind of cool that they dug up a song, you know, with Kevin and and Frankie on it. So they probably have more stuff in the vault with them, and that eventually they'll probably put out or something, you know. Yeah, I think that was, a, I think that was, was pretty good. I was supposed to be found on an old iPod. Is that true? Yeah, that's what they say. The story was, yeah. I thought it was your iPod, Jerry. Nah. <laughs> oh, the one yours? <laughs> the way I read it, I thought you said you think I would give that away? You think I'd give that away for free? Hell no, man. That makes like, and then a video <laughs> came out. I was like, damn, movers and shakers <laughs> on the BS set. I still have my original iPod, though. Come think about it. Dude, iPod, dude. I don't have an iPod. I have my iPhone. <laughs> I don't need an iPod. But, uh, I didn't listen to it because I didn't have time. I've been working all week. Um, so I'm I'm going to check it out and uh, probably talk about it maybe on uh, a Reform Rock podcast video on Saturday with Lee. So yeah, it's, kind of, it's, it's, it's valid and good. It's, it's, it's really good. Man. Kevin DeBrell was awesome. He was a great fucking singer. You know, uh, I think Br- Frank, Frankie Bonali, nobody puts him in their top drummers. That guy was like Bonham, man. He fucking hit that shit hard. <laughs> Even with cancer, that guy was fucking hitting that shit hard. Like, and you guys, did you guys ever see that documentary? Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, I were, they, guess, they, they, were they auditioned like four or five singers? One yeah. guy showed up at the Vegas hotel or something. They were at. He got the job. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool actually. How that happened? Oh, you know what I'm happy about? I'm just gonna. I just gotta rant about this a little bit. I just got like a case to put in my fucking. Um, old hard drives I have. I found my Metallica pictures, which I used a real Canon camera at the Death Magnetic Tour in 2009. I found those gigs. I lost those on my Facebook account mm-hmm. because they took it away. So now I have them again. I will po- be posting them and I got four hard drives because I'm missing a lot of music that didn't transfer over. So I had to buy a case and I'm just going to get that shit. And then I have p- pictures of my ex-wife, which is not cool. But uh, I'm going to delete all those fuckers. But uh she cheated on me that bitch hey vanessa hi but uh all right let's get into our uh the reason we're here we're gonna make an album are we gonna do side one and side two on this jerry and charles that's how i got it but i don't care how you guys want to do i'll it. split mine up it's no no big deal 
I got I six ranked, and five. I ranked mine from one to eleven. That's one how I did it. Well, it's fine. You could do whatever you want, man. We we, right. we don't we don't mine's have a, a CD. Play. Here's a CD. That's fine. I'll make mine a CD too. <laughs> All right. So we're doing our uh, top eleven Southern rock songs. So let's go with your number eleven, Andy. Yep, I am going to start off with a band that I've gotten into the past couple of years. And I've talked about them a couple of times, the Marshall Tucker Band. And I'm going to go with This Old Cowboy. It's a badass song. I'm not too sure if y'all are familiar with that song. But it's pure southern rock. It, it's got a piano solo, a violin solo, a flute solo. Then it goes to the guitar solo. And it's just a... It's just a badass jam. So that's how I'm going to start off my album is with a Marshall Tucker band. I could have gone with different songs by them, but this is my favorite song by them. Well, I'm glad you went with that one. <laughs> it's a good song, though. Yeah. Right, let's go with you, Al. What's your number 11? Um, working with Disaster, Molly Hatchet. So, song rocks. Um, I saw Molly Hatchet. God, a couple of years ago. I don't think there's any original members left in that band, but um, speaking speaking of bands that have no original members, um, <laughs> true. But they were but but they were good. And Pat Travers actually opened up for them, and he was he was great. So, and I had never seen Pat Travers before, so I was I never seen either one of them actually before. So, but Pat Travers, I was just particularly uh, uh, excited to see, and he didn't disappoint. He he's still a great guitar player and. Stuff like that. But Molly Hatchet put with disaster. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, my list is gonna be it's not gonna be any surprises. I could be like real deep cuts. It's just stuff that I loved when I was growing up. I mean, and that's one of the songs that I always loved, man. Every time that song comes out, man, I crank that fucker. So that's yeah, my Pat, number one. Pat Travers is my hero, man. I snorted whiskey because of that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All not right. drink, not drink cocaine. <laughs> no, I didn't drink the cocaine. I've never touched a shit. I only smoked weed. Uh, Andy, what's your number 11? Charles. Charles. Oh, Charles, what's your number 11? I don't have an 11. I have an album. Okay. So my opening track, My Son Rock. I went out of my way to make sure that the majority of mine, you will not be able to say, any one of you motherfuckers would pick this. I did a lot of research <laughs> on this. There might be a couple, and my opener Good. might be fun, but that's okay, because I like it a lot. And it kind of has ties to the Army, too. That's probably why I love it. Uh, my opening track is from Steve Earl, Copperhead Road. That's a fucking Everybody great song. Everybody knows that song. That's a great fucking Everybody song. Everybody knows, but I didn't pick yeah. it. It's a great song. I had that tape. I had that tape, man. Just <laughs> open that up. It's got them drums. It's, just, it's a cool story, too. It goes the whole, you know, from moonshine running all the way to, what, coke running? Yeah. The last verse or whatever. It's a badass song. Love it. Steve Earl. Steve Earl's badass. Nice. Cherry, what's yours? Nice. Um, I'm like Al on this one. I'm not going to put out any surprises. Um, I'm going to go with Andy's band with the obvious Marshall Tucker band song, Can't You See? Asshole. I mean, Great fucking tune, dude, man. Rest in peace. Tom you Paul. Classic, dude. Classic. Great singer. I mean, I love the flute. Everything's cool about it, dude. When you, when you make a flute cool in a song, dude, you got something going. I'm telling you. Yeah. He's got these great fucking vocals in it. Um, he died, what, 1980, I think, Tommy Caldwell mm -hmm. did? Mm -hmm. and I, think, I, I don't know. Do they still tour? Are they still around? They still tour with only one member because his brother was also in the band, but his brother died a couple years after... His brother as well. Okay. But but for years I thought that was the Almond Brothers band. For years I thought it was Almond Brother. It's got these great guitar fills in it, dude. That are just yeah. awesome. It's just a, it's just a great tune, man. And when you think of when you when you think of Southern Rock, dude, come on, that song has to come to your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so anyway, that's my opening song off my album. All right, then mine. I'm going with Government Mule, Bad Little Doggy. Like, I don't think any of you motherfuckers picked any government mule. Nope, I didn't pick that one, man. I, didn't, I, I was close. I was close to picking some government mule, but I didn't end up picking any. But that's a good one, dude. Oh, I, I looked good on them, but then I, um, but then none of them made my top eleven. Yeah, but a government mule is fucking rules. Fucking Brian Davis, man. You fucking got me into that band on the bad beat on that metal station.com. 
fucking rules Wednesday nights. I missed them last night because uh, we're doing your show, Andy, and I didn't fucking want to go on later. I wanted to watch some TV. <laughs> but that's my number 11. And then we get to uh, 10, Al. What's your 10? Oh, is it Andy's or Oh, uh, Andy. Go to 10. I like to mix it up, but go ahead, Andy. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right, um, my my track two on side one is going to be Amy by the Pure Perry League. Who? Oh, cool. Amy. Pure Perry League. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amy, right, right, right. what you gonna do? Oh, I know. My sister, song. my sister will yeah. love you for that one. Man. I love that song. That's a cool song. Does your sister even watch this show anymore? She stopped. She calling does. Oh, okay. She does. She's working Amy, like 10, 12 hours a day. Anyway, Amy, I ain't know she does. She rules. <laughs> But yeah, that's my number two is Amy. So what's your number ten, uh, Al? Uh, another band that doesn't have any original numbers left. Uh, Blackfoot with Train Train. <laughs> um, great, I love that song too, man. Great chug and riff on that. Heavy, yeah. you know, one of the heavier Southern rock songs. Uh, pretty underrated band, actually. I thought they were. That was Ricky Medlock's band. Yeah. Um, he goes in there sometimes. He shows up like yeah. Jones. Yeah. But he he's in like Skinner. He's in Skinner he's now. Pretty, I guess he oversees them now or something. Yeah, and they he go does. out for, you know. But he's still in, man. That song kicks ass, man. Mm-hmm. So that's he's still in Skinner? He's still in Skinner, yeah. Is he still in Skinner? Okay. He's still in Skinner, yes. So, Charles, I guess you made an album. So, what's your number two? Uh, my number two, maybe somebody did pick. I don't know, but it's uh, kind of a 70s jam as well. The Edgar Winter Group, Free yeah. Ride. Okay, yep. Great song. Great song, though. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Just good old. I don't know, I don't know why, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I never really thought of that as like a Southern rock song, but but no, it's got the, it's, it's got the flavor to it. It does. For, for, from Beaumont, Texas. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, man. And Days and Confused, man. Days and Confused. Oh, man. That's yeah. fucking great. One of my favorite movies, man. Yeah. Man, and that song is perfect for that scene, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, Jerry, I love that song. Your number 10. My number, t- well, actually, it's my number two on my album. But uh, I don't really, I didn't really, I like the studio version, but man, they did killer ass live versions of this whipping post by the Almond Brothers band. Yeah. Dude, man, listen to lost all their concerts, man. They just fucking jammed through them live, dude. It's incredible sounding. And what song is it? Whipping, whipping post. post. <laughs> live at the Fillmore, dude. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Great. I mean, fuck, I love Greg Almond, man. Uh, rest in peace. I think the only one alive is uh, fucking uh, Dickie Betts, ain't it? Yeah, Dickie yeah. Betts. J-Mo. J-Mo, is- J-Mo is alive, so. Just sucks, man. All these people die. But anyway, that's my number. That's my second song off my uh, first side. Well, I'm going to go for a country southern rock crossover. I'm going to pick The Devil Went Down to Georgia by the Charlie Daniels Band. That's fucking Southern Rock as fuck. See? Just, and that's, that killer, that goes into my, I was going to pick that one, but I knew one of you guys was going to do it. So. Okay, uh, take my uh, line for me, bitch. <laughs> you know, what, if I'm waiting for one of you guys to pick Leonard Skinner, because I don't think I picked Leonard Skinner because I got pissed off at everybody picking Leonard Skinner. So like, <laughs> you cannot pick Leonard Skinner. I mean, that's just <laughs> awesome. I, but the thing is, everybody... That's like, I like Christmas, but I don't care for Santa Claus that much. <laughs> I, I don't like I don't like Satan Claus like in uh the, what's that movie with the kiss uh, uh where they say Santa Santa Claus Satan Satan it makes sense now with Joe Flaherty you know Detroit, Detroit Rock, Rock City, City movie <laughs> Satan Santa Satan Santa it makes sense now yeah I don't like Santa Claus either so then we get to your no, your uh, let's see I'm confused Al uh, Andy what's your number nine Well I love Santa Claus. Um, my number three track is going to be Kings of Leon, Take the Gene Girl, off of their second album. They do, my, actually, I don't no, they, do actually, they do have Southern Rock songs. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. that. I've heard. 
Yeah, and my wife said that they're not Southern Rock. I believe they are Southern Rock. They're they're out of Kentucky. Um, they have changed their sound, but this was off their second album, which was just pure Southern Rock punk. If if I wanted to I'd describe it, but the name of the song is um, a Taper Jean Girl. I do like Kings of Leon. I didn't even think of they that. have they have that song going down south now. It was actually kind of a hit for them. That's a really southern rock sound. Yeah. So, yeah. I could have picked some Three Doors Down, but I didn't. You know, they are southern too. Uh, Al, what's your number nine or your album? Uh, well, this band really kind of combined a pop sensibility with a southern rock kind of sound and it's 38 specials hold on loosely yeah um, i almost picked that that's a, yeah that's a, i mean that's a song that really kind of crossed over to you know from like a southern to like a pop more of a pop rock you know type of song but it's still a great song i love it i've always loved it since i was a kid hearing it and uh that's really it man i mean it's a great song i mean 38 special man they're, they're a great band too they yes, are a great band. Well, except that album, uh, Rock and Roll Strategy, with that other singer, <laughs> Second Chance. Uh, I love that song. That album. I, love it. You know, I, love I, it. I did like the song Rock and Roll Strategy, but I didn't like any other song off that album. <laughs> nah, the worst the war song, the war song on 38 Special was Teacher Teacher. I like Teacher Teacher. Oh, that, that was written, you know, that was written by Brian Adams. That was on his oh. reckless 30th anniversary. That was a right that that teacher soundtrack. That teacher soundtrack is pretty good. I have it on vinyl. Yeah, yeah, me too. I have it on vinyl. But uh, who's next, Charles? Yeah, glad Al left because Thirty Eight Specials "Hold On Loosely" made me not like that band, so I wouldn't <laughs> put it on mine. Uh, from uh, I think one of the viewers picked this one, which uh, a good they got good taste. The uh, Fox Chase from Blackfoot. Mm. Nice. That, that's a really cool song, and uh, everybody should check that one out if you're not in, not aware of it. Uh, yeah, like I said, I did a little research on this one here. So, but I mean, I guess someone else picked it. So, so it's pretty well. Must be pretty well known. Well, most, I've I, I hadn't heard it. I heard it while reviewing or uh, working on this, and I was like, yeah, that's a good one. I want to throw that. Yeah. Throw that one. Out. Mine's Skinner Free. I stayed with the Skinner Free mandate because I, uh, when we get our bonus tracks, we'll, we'll see what I say on that. Uh, but on just this, I wanted to stay off Skinner and all these stereotypes. Play some Skinner, man. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you played. on that, Charles. Because when uh, I asked the fans about what's your favorite Southern Rock songs, it's like Skinner, 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 Skinner. James West, you suck. But I, I love you, James. At the same time. So it's like, I had a Skinner song here, but after I saw that, I took it out and changed it with something else. Uh, Niners are kicking ass, just saying. But uh, <laughs> well, let's, go to, ago. let's go to you, Jerry. Um, number three is LeGrand, ZZ Top, man. Love that song. Uh I think that movie, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, was actually off, kind of like talking about the place that they were talking I think about. Kind of like, I think that's it was kind of like a whorehouse. It was like, it was like a like Marvin a whorehouse Zindler, whorehouse. the chicken ranch. Yeah. The chicken ranch. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Story. It's, just, it's, it's a fucking Story. great tune, man. Great jamming tune, man. I fucking love ZZ Top, man. Now, ZZ Top should be on guys' list. Come on. I, I don't consider them Southern Rock. I consider them Texas what? Blues. Texas Blues. I didn't put them on my list either. It's like uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, dude. They're Texas Blues. They ain't Southern Rock, Okay, man. I was going to put Linda Ronstadt on it, but she's, she's more country, <laughs> oh right? Oh, my God. What? <laughs> Whatever. Hey, I'll put the London fucking Choir Boys on next time. Of course you would, because you, you like White Claw, right? Okay. <laughs> You know, I did listen to the London Choir Boys. I still don't like them. All right. Good for you. <laughs> and then we get to mine. My, my, I'm going number nine. I'm going Elvin Bishop Traveling Shoes. Mm -hmm. Fucking great fucking deep track. This guy. If you ever know who Elvin Bishop is, he's fucking a great guitarist. I, I only know that one song. By Pulled him, around man. and fell in love with Mickey yeah. Thomas. The only song I knew about him. Oh, dude. I have this album called that I got from Columbia. It's called 
Southern Rock. Uh, it's a two CD set. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's one of their compilations. I like. I got a lot of songs off that fucking album because I knew some of you motherfuckers wouldn't pick that shit. <laughs> and then we get to uh, what's your next one, Al? I'm going next. Okay. Um, well, I think you guys were just ranting on them, saying that they aren't Southern Rock. I don't know. They could be Southern Rock a little bit here and there, but I don't know. I'm going ZZ Top with Beer Drinkers Thank and you. Hellraisers. <laughs> So that was my thing. My thing was Lagrange. Yeah, I, 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 I love that song. I count them. I, you know, they're from the south, so like, so, uh, yeah. All right, yeah, the Texas blues, but like they can, they can be considered a little bit of southern rock in there. They too, could, but I was trying to go for Dixon, bands, man. So. It's about southern rock to me. So. Shit, there's there's Canadian there's Canadian artists that are considered southern rock. Yes, yeah, so. Rolling Stones made two Southern Rock albums in uh, Muscle Shoals Studio. There you go. Uh, Sticky Fingers and Exile Main Street. Fucking Southern Rock. Yep. yep. Mm. So I was arguing with some lady at work today. They ain't Southern Rock. They're the, uh, dude, you want me to fucking Mick Jagger says you're wrong because he they said they went to fucking Muscle Shoals to get mm-hmm. that Southern Rock bill and they brought in fucking Southern Rock singers to back back them up. They wanted to make a Southern Rock album. I said, so Mick Jagger disagrees there. And she goes, fuck you, Mark. And I go, okay. <laughs> but we're cool. <laughs> she's she's a grumpy old lady. I, saw I, I love Darlene. You know, but uh, it was if, funny. Um, uh, so, so Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, um, mm-hmm. if, never, if everybody's never seen it, uh, Van Halen did a great cover of that. If you could search it out on YouTube, I think... Um, mm-hmm. Probably in the US Festival or like one of their other concerts with uh with Dave. Um uh they did a cool cover version of that, like where Dave and Michael Anthony kind of traded off vocals. I, I thought they did a cool version of that. So I love that song. I mean shit. Um even I didn't Pantera even like do a cover of that or something. So did or, Tesla, dude. Yeah. Tesla did a great it, version of that song. Pretty pretty heavy song, man. It's got that chug and riff, you know. Yeah. 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 So let me go to you, Andy. What's your next track? Yeah, my fourth track on side one is going to be Black Crow's Blue Eyes. <laughs> Hold on. Baby, sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. I got it. I, I got You're ahead of me, so shut up, Jerry. <laughs> but um, I'm going to go with um, Bad Bad Luck Blue Eyes Goodbye. Great song. Uh, yeah. Great song. Great song. Southern Black Harmony Earth. and Southern Companion. Ooh. Yep. Now I see what you were seeing, Jerry. Rough in the past. <laughs> I love the crows, right. man. Uh, fuck that shit. Yeah, man. that was their crown. Their, their best album, I think. That was a crowning achievement, in my opinion. Oh, dude, they yeah. got great albums after that. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. But that was Amor- their best. Amorica's great. Amorica's yeah. side is amazing. Great. They had a great run, man. By your side. Fucking great. Great shit, dude. Even uh, Three Snakes yeah. and a Charm is really good. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, like, what's your net? What's yours, Charles? Uh, I'm gonna bring out a little country metal on this one, and uh, Hank Williams the Third featuring David Allen Coe in the Pantera rhythm section. Get out of my life. <laughs> oh no, shit. Huh. Oh yeah. And That's a course, David Allen Coe album. The David Allen Coe album, right? Like they yeah, did they. It's there's like mixtures of cowboys. Rebel, rebel, or something. Song. Yeah, it's, rebel meets it's rebel. Like, Re- rebel meets rebel. That's it. Yeah, so it's like That's a mixture of all these songs with Hank Williams the third with them, and it it absolutely crushes. So yeah, kind of. I found it on Hank Williams the third on one of his records because he's got country albums and then he's got like punk albums and and he, he crosses over a lot so that's just really really good good song yeah. check it you out know, he's very interesting um hank williams the third he is yeah, I, I saw him with super joint ritual oh really wow bass player mm. yeah so, oh shit so what yeah, about he's you doing a lot. Oh, sorry. they have a little video of his with his favorite albums and it's a really interesting Little video he pulls out all these different genres of music, so pretty cool. Oh, dude. oh that's something to check out. Thanks for letting me know about that. Because uh, I always, I'm always curious on what 
musicians or rock stars to listen to, you know, to see yeah. who the, who they like. If it's the same albums that I like, so it's a pretty cool thing. And yeah. Jerry, that was a bullshit call, roughing the bachelor. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> that, was yeah, bullshit. that was bad. Bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> that guy, he was throwing was the ball cool. as he tackled him, dude. Yeah. All right, um, is it my turn? Yeah. My uh, Mine's Highway Song from Blackfoot. Uh, love that band. I love, I'm a guitar player and I love fucking songs that just jam. And that song is just one big jam, in my opinion. Um, so I had to include that one on my Southern Rock albums. Highway Song by Blackfoot. And I'm going for uh, Dixie Chicken by Little Fit. Nice. Like a great fucking song. No, I, I didn't like this band when I first heard them and I've been getting into them lately. They Have you? Really good Cajun Southern rock band. Fucking really good. People should check out some fucking Little Feet. Really good. And then we get to your next song, uh, Ow. Ow. Um, well, I'm, I picked up one down to Georgia, Charlie Daniels band. Um, right on. I got to see him. I got to see him live. He played right in my hometown at a little theater uh, a couple blocks away from me one night. And I didn't have it. I wasn't. I just heard that he was in town. He's playing, and one night I'm, I'm just sitting around the house. I'm like, I told my wife, I'm like, Tina, I'm just gonna go take a walk down there and just go buy a ticket and go see him because, I mean, he's getting up there in age. Who knows how long he's gonna be around, you know? So I went down there by myself. I, I actually there was a couple of friends of mine that were at the show already. They already had bought tickets, so I went right to the box and was bought a ticket. Went in, saw a show, and he kicked ass, man. I mean, he was he was great, dude, and. uh I got to pick that one down in Georgia because it's a fucking classic, man, you know? Mm -hmm. And he kicked ass, and I'm glad I saw him because he's not around anymore. So I could scratch him off the bucket list, say that I saw mm -hmm. him. And uh, he was awesome still. At his age, man, he was still killing it, you know? I mean, these, the, the, the country guys, man, they, they go until they, they drop, dude, you know, pretty much. So, you mm -hmm. know, look at Willie Nel look at Willie Nelson, man. He's still going, man. <laughs> Yeah. Willie Nelson, he's still going, Richard, man. man. I'm telling you, Willie still Nelson, is a hero. <laughs> like yeah. you go on his tour bus, man, you're getting stoned. <laughs> I was sure. Oh, you know about Charlie Daniels, man. He was a really cool, dude, man. And, uh, yeah, he made the yeah. I wish. <laughs> like when I went to that show, like I kind of wish I would have stuck around. Maybe I would have met him after, but I didn't. I just went home after. But you know, now, now in hindsight, I would have like, right. you know, it could have been a picture of me with him. You know? <laughs> Sebastian you know I mean? Bach told a story about like he took his mom to see Charlie Daniels, uh, no, uh, Willie Nelson, and uh, they, uh, Charlie, uh, Willie Nelson recognized Sebastian and says, Hey, come back to my tour bus. So he took his mom on the tour bus and they got really high <laughs> after that. So uh, that was pretty cool. You know, Sebastian Bach is a dick, I think, but um, he isn't a dick at the same time. I think Willie Nelson, I think he does like edibles now. I don't know if he smokes anymore. I don't think he smokes but anymore, though. Yeah, I think he does the edible thing. Dude, I've tried but. the edibles, dude. It's like this woo goo. This shit don't get me high. It sucks. <laughs> Fuck that woo goo. Like it come on, that, fucking, what? I need to get some Cheech and Chong edibles. I th think that shit would work better than a fucking woo goo. Wu Tang. <laughs> and Wu Tang. <laughs> Wu Tang could fucking suck my ass. <laughs> How many got to eat? Al, it's legal where you live too, right? Uh, Pot, marijuana, marijuana, yeah. yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, what is it like you two? I mean, do you just go to like the is that, get on the like the convenience store and find pot? There's, uh, there's dispensaries, dispensaries. Yeah. there's dispensaries. Okay. I get my shit delivered, dude. Holy shit, what I get my fuck? shit delivered. They deliver it to me. I pay with my debit card, they fucking bring it to me, and I'm out there oh, waiting for them. Fuck, man, I get I my shit delivered here, dude. dude. For Come me, on, I don't Tennessee. care. I don't, I, I, for me, I don't care. I don't smoke pot anymore. Right. I, I haven't done it in a long time, but I went through my phase, and I don't know. I just, I kind of don't. I kind of didn't like the way it made me feel. Obviously, honestly, man, to be honest, it does have so, to do for you. Well, don't Paranoid. Yeah. don't get but, sativa. Um, sativa makes you nervous. Indigo makes like you calm. Par it wasn't much of a paranoid thing. It was just kind of like. I don't know, man. It made my heart like race. Or yeah, just made me feel that, like yeah. you right. must have been know, smoking dude. sativa. Sativa make me nervous and heart race, and I was throwing up on it. And then I found out if I get a hybrid or if I get just fucking indigo, I'm fucking calm, and I just get the major munchies. You yeah. make you fat. Uh, That's about it. 
So who's next? I think Charles. you are, man. Me? Andy. Didn't Andy. Charles go? And Andy's next. Oh, Andy. Oh, oh, Andy. I'll be right back. I went inside like one of track five. I was okay. trying to figure out. I know what band I'm going to put here. And I know it's going to be the name of a woman. But which one? So I went with the instrumental in, by the Almond Brothers in memory of Elizabeth Reed to inside. Oh, That's a badass instrumental. Um, I went, I'll just, I'll I'll just say, say, can I just say something real quick, dude? I mean, honestly, I could have just put, I, for my list, I could have just put, hey, put Almond Brothers Fillmore East. I'm good, man. See you later. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I was telling um, uh Jerry, uh, um, while we were doing our football show, there's a couple of bands here. We could do a whole show about Allen Brothers. We could do a whole show about Skinner. We could do a whole show about some of these bands. Dude, if, you ever do an, if we ever do a show about Allen Brothers band, I got to be on that show because that's they're my absolute favorite oh, fuck Southern rock yeah. band of all time, dude. They, and to, yeah. me, to me, they're the fucking kings. Yeah. So uh, We might have to. Oh, well, that's it. Um, in memory of Elizabeth Reed, I'll close this my side one. Um, the um, the studio version for me, because sometimes um, on the live ones, it can go a little bit far. You're like, dude, but I do. Half hour? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, with the post is 23, you know? Yeah. But I do love the Almond Brothers, though. They are, um, they're the best. They just are. Yeah. Love them, man. Yeah. God damn. That would be a fun battle, Skinner against Almond Brothers. Ooh, that yeah. would be. Yeah. Um, I'm more team Skinner, but Almond Brothers are good, no doubt. They're more like they're more of a jam band, world music y to me or something. Yeah, yeah they're like blues soul. To me, to me, um, to me, Almond Brothers incorporate like to me, Skinner's a bit more of a pure Southern rock band, whereas Almond Brothers incorporate like jazz and fucking yeah. blues and. Like they just like a whole world melting music. pot of stuff into yeah, like world music. Some of the world yeah, music is in yeah. there. Yeah, dude, I mean, I've seen dude. I've seen all whenever Almond Brothers played the Beacon Theater here in oh, New York City ask you. every March. It was like uh, me and my friend from Staten Island. It was like a tradition. We went to at least one show every time they played here every year. And the final time I saw them was I got to sit on stage with them, dude. I had the two seats. On the fucking stage, bro. You oh, know, man. and I'm and I'm like sitting and I'm sitting and fucking Greg Almond's like right there, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I I'll never top this seeing them ever again. That was yeah. the last time I ever saw them. And like during the intermission, I wandered backstage because you had to pass, you know, and everything. I, and I ran into I ran into Derek Trucks, I ran into yeah. Warren Haynes, I ran into you know J Mo and all of them. And I had this thing like where. I mean, I know, I'm sorry, we're getting off topic here, but no. um, when I went to my seat, they had this sheet on my seat. It said reserved for best seat winner because I want actually won that. I won a grand prize entry like on a radio station and I got picked to sit on stage. So I took that sheet and I had it with me and all the members like signed that sheet. Greg Allman, all them guys, Butch Trucks, and they're all gone now. But um, and I took that sheet. I stuck my backstage pass on it, and I have that fucker frame. Um, and it's oh, wow. like one of my prized possessions. But going backstage and seeing all them guys, man, it was just like, dude, where am I? I'm in like fucking dreamland here, man. <laughs> you know, and it's just you had freedom, you know, to kind of just wander backstage and just kind of hang with the band and shit. And you know, I kind of wish like. I kind of wish I took pictures with them, but I didn't. I didn't want to intrude too much on them. I was just kind of happy just to get a few words in with them and yeah. stuff. And, and anyway, that's that's my story with them. I mean, I love Lauren Bros. And when they stopped, that was. I mean, they did a final tour after that, and mm -hmm. but the prices like were insane for tickets. And I was just like, you know what? I'm never gonna beat like sitting on state. That's like the pinnacle. You know what am I gonna do? Buy a nosebleed and shit, and have that be my last concert? I didn't even bother. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, I want my last memory of sitting on the stage and uh, just had checking them out. And it was just, a, it was one of my top five concert concerts of all time, dude. I mean, there's nothing could ever beat that besides right. like actually playing with them. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool. You know, I saw them only one time and um, I'm pretty sure Charles knows where the woodlands are. 
the trolls in the woodlands. I, I saw them there. It was like half full, and I was on the lawn, and I kind of separated myself from like the crowd or whatever. And I was like on the tip top, and I was kind of smoking up there by myself. And it was just so yeah. surreal just to hear the Allen brothers kind of like there wasn't anyone within 10 feet from me and just just watching them, man. It was just they're just so surreal, pretty much. Yeah, awesome. yeah, dude, you know, I agree with you, dude. You could just kind of like, even if you're like in an upper level, and you just kind of like, dude, you could just let this music just soak into you, yeah. dude. It's just like, they're just one of those bands where like, you really don't have to be in the front row to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, dude, I mean, it's just like, they're, the music just kind of, just kind of, you know, dude, when they get into a groove and they jam, bro, it's like you get lost in it. And they, take so cool, you them. they take you with them. They take you with them. You do. Yeah. So. So who's next? Ooh, me. Go for it, Charles. All right, my fifth track on my CD here. But, but if I was going to do an LP, I'd end my side one with song six. So song five. I know one of the panelists really likes this guy. This was from his uh, country rock outfit, Mud Crutch. Ooh. And that would be called Ooh. Scare Easy. I almost picked Mud Crutch. Awesome, bro. Dude, yeah. Mud Crunch is awesome, bro. Mud Crunch rules, dude. So if I could have picked it. know Tom Petty had that other band. Check it mm -hmm. out. It's a damn good album. My and, friend, uh, my friend went to go see them here in New York City when you know Tom Petty played the bass in that band. And yeah. uh and I kind of wish like I would have grabbed a ticket and went to see that man. And he saw him in like a club, uh that club kind of a um club slash theater. Like, you know, decent sized plays. Yeah. There's something smaller than what Tom Petty would normally play, you know. Um, and he said it was awesome, man. It was great. And I kind of wish I would have went to that. But much crutch, man. I have the album yeah. and stuff. It's a great album, man. You know, I have we, one and two. Yeah, I prefer those venues like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I like those. Hell yeah, dude. I'd setting. rather go to that than an arena. I try to get know? all my shows at casinos now. Because <laughs> there's no yeah. fees, dude. There's no fees yeah. at casinos, man. But the great thing about Mud Crutch, every time one of these um, stars do a side project, it sounds just like their other band. You know, the yeah. thing is, Mud Crunch wasn't a side but project. Crunch, that was his original band. Right, right. But, but Mud Crutch just sounded so different from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Yeah, because he had another singer in there. Yeah, I know. So it was just, you know, it's just that when people go, oh, well, I got a side project, but it sounds just like your other band, you know? But this yeah. was a total change, and I loved it. Good pick. Yeah. No crutch. Good, Good pick, pick, man. man. Yeah. And Jerry, what's yours? All right. It's Skinner time. <laughs> of course it is, right? I can't, I, can't, I can't leave this song off my list. It's one of my top five favorite songs of all time, so there's no way I'm leaving it off the list. Tuesday's gone. I mean, great, great song, song, dude. Great mm -hmm. song. You can't go wrong with that. It's I almost so picked that until so the fans picked a lot of Skinner, so I took oh, it off. Man. I mean, that song, it's a beautifully written fucking song, dude, man. Uh, there's no way I could have left that song off my list. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I know it's Skinner, but still. Yeah. Great. Cutting great off pick, an arm the, if I cut off an arm or a leg, I can't do it, dude. Sorry. Got me. I think I kind of picked a like Skinnerdish band here, uh, Rossington Collins band. Don't misunderstand me. Underrated band. Dun, dun, Underrated dun, band. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That riff of that song, and he has a female singer in there with him. Fuck it, it's a great fucking jam, man. Fucking How many albums did they make, Rossington Collins? I think, I think three. Okay. I think three. I'm not positive, but you'd have to look it up. Um, underrated band, dude. I, I they don't get like a lot of mention, but they did some pretty cool shit, man. I mean, I mean, obviously it's the Skinner family, so it's right. gonna be it's gonna get overshadowed by Skinner, but right. Um, I, I think I think they were pretty solid, dude. Hmm. Fucking great fucking band. I love that song. And then we yeah. go with go with you, Al. What's your next one? Um, I'm gonna go with uh, an epic here. Uh, the Outlaws, Green Grass and High Tides. I mean, how can you not have that on a, like a, right. a Southern rock list? You know, I mean, it's like an epic song. The soul the guitar solos in there are epic. I mean, it's just 
what else can I say about it, man? I mean, the Stones how, how long is that song? Even like ten minutes, almost. Didn't the, Stone, <laughs> didn't the Stones have a compilation album called that too? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. cool tune, man. It is. I mean, it's on. It's on. Uh, it's on Freedom Rock, man. So you got to turn it up. <laughs> yeah, it was. A, it's like it's like ten minutes long. Dude. It's a it's a long song. Yeah. It was on an episode of Breaking yeah. Bad too. I remember. So yeah, it's a good tune. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. The Outlaws. <laughs> What's your next one, Andy? Well, I'm going to start off side two, track one. I don't know if these guys are Southern Rock because it's a little bit more northwest than Southern Rock. Talk about Kansas. Progressive. <laughs> Point of no return. That's not Southern That's Rock. Side two. That's Southern Rock. Yeah, it's yeah, if you think it's Southern Rock, it's Southern Rock, man. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's they're, more, they're more progressive rock. They're Southern Prague. Southern Prague. Yeah. Okay. I'll, let you, I'll let you pick it because it's cool. Thank you. I do love Kansas. <laughs> so I, uh, I mean, uh, my personal opinion, I don't, wouldn't put that exactly as right? a Southern rock song. Yeah, I would put. It. I mean, it's got the keyboard. Like it's 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 a little more Prague to me, but uh, hey. That's all right, man. You know, you got fiddle. Everybody's allowed to have an error. <laughs> I'm like, I said, it was a little bit more northwest. Hey, listen, I, I think it's easy top, and you don't consider them southern. No, I don't. I did too. We're easy. We're easy. One to one. All right, Charles, what's your next one? <laughs> I'm going to close out. I love you, Andy. The LP. <laughs> Track six, I picked from the uh, almonds that we've gone over a bunch. Melissa, oh, yeah. for me, for me, you can't go wrong with any almond brothers, so no. I, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm gonna end that side one with Melissa. Slow oh, it down, good yeah. tune. All right, Jerry. Yeah. Hey, listen, hey, okay, go ahead. dude, listen. If, if one of the <laughs> let's just say. One of the if the Owen Brothers band had two drummers, had J Mo yeah. and Butch Trucks. Right. If one of them lost a limb, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. <laughs> you know what I mean? Three arm, <laughs> three armed Owen Brothers. <laughs> These are always got to bring Jeff Leppard into this, right? <laughs> Love you, Charles. I mean, yeah. I don't have no show. Mark's the one gets mad about it. I don't get mad. It's just funny. <laughs> I don't get mad about anything, man. Hey, and Mark's. In Mark's defense, dude, I, there's some nine norm Def Leppard I like too. I don't, I don't hate all that shit. So, yeah, man, I can't, I can't wait for the best of 2022. It's in, a, it's in a minority though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. No, y'all, I remember this, but um, this is like a called the Almond Joys before they became the Almond Brothers. Oh wow! Yeah, this was with um, Dwayne and Greg, of course, but this was before they formed. Allen Brothers, they were called the Allen and Joys. Allen and Joys, yeah, there you mm. go. Cool, man. I thought get that. Thing. So, Jerry, what's your next? Um, ending my side one with, I mean, you can't have a Southern Rock album without the great Bob Seger. Um, Against the Wind is my favorite song by him. He's Midwest. Uh, Dude, it's fucking Southern Rock, dude. Uh, whatever. It's the East of fucking Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what it's Southern Rock. That ain't Southern Rock. That's it's Detroit. more Southern Rock than Kansas. Sorry, Andy. Why'd you pick Ted Nugent then? Jeez. He's closer to the North Pole than he's to Texas. <laughs> oh, At least sorry. Texas is south. Bob Seger is fucking Southern Rock. Okay, Mom, whatever. Don't piss off. Stop picking against the wind. I was going to talk about it, but fuck you. Go ahead. But that is a great song that I love against the wind. It, That's is, it is a great song, but it is Southern Rock. Dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't you pick John Mellencamp? He's from Indiana. <laughs> Why don't you pick my ass? Southern Ontario. Why don't you pick my ass? <laughs> Well, fuck, we'll see each other in the pot. I'll kiss your ass. Nah, nah, I didn't say kiss yeah. it. I said pick it. Oh, fuck, I ain't going to pick your ass. Uh, and then I get to my next one. The Georgia Satellites, and it ain't keep your hands. Georgia your Satellites mouth. isn't Southern. I'm just kidding. Here, fuck, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Georgia in your name. I didn't pick keep your hands. The gloves yourself. are fucking off, dude. The gloves are off. The gloves have been off. Oh, it's fucking somebody picked Kansas. You better fucking but, uh, get some good Kansas Bob Seeger. 
Bob Seger ain't Southern Rock. He's fucking, He's fucking Southern Rock. He ain't Next Southern Rock. Rock. Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Well, it doesn't matter where in the from, French, dude. In the French, you know, Jerry, you, in the French of Jerry, bro, like Bob Seger has some Southern, Southern-ish sounding songs. I mean, you, there's some songs that could pass with the Southern Rock sound flavor thing, you know. Oh, come I, on. I, I, don't think, I don't know about Against the Wind, though. I don't kind no, of fire uh, Southern Rock. Is like fun. a rock would be more Southern Rock. Fire Lake, that's Southern Rock. Fuck it. Oh, whatever. Even Night News is a little Southern Rock. Oh, God, you know no. Oh, well, you know, Bob Seeker is America's voice. That's He's just Ameri- a yeah. He's Americana, man. Anyway, where are we? <laughs> well, it's my turn. Well, that was our... well, no, I picked. I picked. I didn't get to finish my Nights of Mystery, George yeah. Georgia Satellites, and the first album. I fucking that's my favorite song by that band. That first album is great, dude. That first yeah, album rules, man. They didn't yeah, make a bad yeah. album, dude. Dan Bard is really good on his solo shit too. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, was it Rick Richards Ch- on a guitar? Yeah. Great Dude, fucking great, band. Man. Battleship yeah. Chains, fucking second Rick album. Richards really ruled on the Juju Hounds. Oh, fuck yeah, Juju that's right. Hounds. Yeah, that's right. He was in them too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but could fucking fucking what's his name sing? No. All right. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And then we get to your next one, Al. Uh, let's see here. Hey, it's gonna be Leonard Skinner. Of course. I'm going is. with Simple Man. Simple Man, I think it's an amazing song. Uh, I mean, everybody knows it, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But I mean, you, I, listen, there, I, I I tried going. There, there's only two bands that um, I tried not to like pick like more than one song by a band, but I had to make exception for two bands. And Skinner and Allman Brothers are going to be on this list twice, so. Uh, as far as anybody else, they're on the list once. But anyway, you can't have a fucking Southern Rock album without Leonard Skinner. So, I mean, I know Mark. I know you know other people are going to pick it anyway, so that's why you didn't. Yeah, of so, course. And that's cool, you know. But Simple Man, I think that's an awesome song. It's one of their... Yeah. I mean, there's so many songs by them that are classics, but I got to go with that one. It's one of I, my favorite. I did have Tuesdays Gone to the group just picked a million uh, fucking... Leonard Skinner songs, and I go fuck this. Shame on you. But uh, what's your next one, Andy? Well, I'm going to go with Georgia Satellites. Um, I got a little change in my pocket going jingling away. (laughs) Keep your hands to yourself. It's a great song. I remember that summer. That summer was it was all over the place on the radio on MTV. You know, and Georgia Satellites was on, like, Good Morning America and, like, on all these shows, man. And it was great. It was a great time. It was, like, 12, 11. You know, it was hot as hell. When did that come out? 87, 88, 87? Around that time, yeah. Hey, hi, Molly. Are you in the back of Andy right now? Yeah. (laughs) That's their theme song, he said, so. (laughs) (laughs) I was, I like, I was like, that I made him my wife. <laughs> the, Georgia Sound, next? dude, Georgia Sound is getting some fucking love on his show. They fucking rule. I got their live album, dude. I played that on that metal station. I got the live album is fucking great. Double CD live album by them. They, they're a great band, man. People, yeah. hey, hey, people hey, check out like Dan Bard solo shit too. Speaking of bands that like. You know, you wouldn't think of like as a southern rock, but I almost toyed with the idea of putting like one of the one of the songs by this band on here. But then I was like, nah, just it would just be like too kind of far left. But like, I mean, from Athens, Georgia, REM has a couple songs that could kind of pass, has a little bit of a southern rockish sound, but they're a little too alternative, kind of. But True. They're from the Athens, Georgia, man. They were influenced by that sound on some of their early, especially their early stuff, man. Some of that jangly like stuff, man. And I was like, I was look, I was listening to a couple of their songs. And I'm like, yeah, it, could, it could get a pass, but I'm like, eh, not top eleven though. Ra- you know what radio, I mean? so, radio free Europe could be totally fucking Southern rock. <laughs> um, I was thinking about more like you know, don't go back to Rockville. Don't or, go back to Rockville. Uh, driver yeah. eight, driver eight, driver eight, still, yeah, driver things eight, like yeah. that. Yeah. So, 
But anyway, like I was just kind of interjecting that, but or don't fall anyway. on me, dude. Don't fall on me. It's totally Southern Rock. Yeah. Oh, I like that early REM shit, man. It's the Athens, stuff, Georgia's man. dude had a lot of eclectic bands come out of like the B B fifty twos, right? Oh yeah, B fifty twos, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I don't want to disagree with y'all because I love REM. I love them. They're from Georgia, but that doesn't make them Southern Rock. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, Southern Rock. Yeah, well, you picked Kansas, me. Andy. <laughs> that's rock. <laughs> that's closer to South Rock than REM Driver Eight. That's Midwest shit. No, Driver Eight is more Southern Rock than anything Kansas did. Oh my God! Okay, take a break, Driver Eight. Take a break. Come on, man. All right, next. All right, next. Who's next, Charles? Yeah, my next two tracks will be from newer groups. I think, unfortunately, this group only made one record, or I couldn't find much more on them. A band called Crowbar Kane. Wow. The song's called Walk Your Line. Mm. Check Crowbar that out. Kane. The album was 2008. Crowbar Kane. C-R-O-B-A-R. And then, like, Sugar Kane. Crowbar oh, Kane. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, really cool song. A good groove to it. Uh, definitely off the beaten path. Uh, the mm. album was out about 2008, so uh, check it out. It's okay. a decent song there. So I don't, I didn't find anything else on them. So I guess they broke up. But wow. you know, it's to find information on them. But it's definitely got that. Gotta check it out, man. Southern group. I do to too. It. I need to check it out. Send us the link, man. We'll check All it right. out. All right. What's your next one, Jerry? Um. Bob Seger? You'll probably, you'll probably give me shit about this one, too. But this is Southern fucking rock. I don't care what you say. Peaceful, easy feeling by the Eagles. Yeah, go ahead and go. That is it's Southern L.A. Rock. Southern rock, yeah. They have a fucking banjo, okay? <laughs> well, you should have picked Midnight Rider. That's but, uh, no, I mean, rock. <laughs> that's, such a, that's such a cool song written by Take Jack Denson. Um, I mean, a lot of songs on their first mm-hmm. album were actually a lot of co-writers, like Jackson Brown, uh, there yeah, more country people, but, uh, than Southern Rock back then. Oh, God, here we go again, dude. Fuck. <laughs> okay. It's a Southern. I even asked Charles. I said, "Would you consider the yeah, Eagles?" But he said, said he yes. wouldn't pick them. So well, okay. he said he, he could said he considered them. So kiss my butt the again. Eagles, the, the Eagles walk that fine line, in my opinion. They're you know they're that California, but they they that the early oh. Eagles. I mean, we're yes. talking about yeah, pre, yeah, early Eagles. Pre Joe Walsh, yeah, yeah. Joe Walsh. The, Bur- the Bernie Reed era. Yeah. It has a Southern rock feel to it. It's yeah. definitely country, country rock. Well, country rock easily. It was so. taking the birds another step farther into the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah shit. I should have picked some Jackson Brown then, right? Shit. Running on empty. <laughs> All right. So my, my next one is uh, Living in a Dream, Archangels. Wow, Archangels. Fucking great fucking song because I had that fucking compilation. They were on there. I, go, I played it on that metal station. That's like, Charlie Jesus. Sexton, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Charlie Sexton is Southern Rock. If you ever listen to and, fucking and, Charlie. Um, and uh, oh, the guy that plays with Clapton um, uh, on guitar. Robert Cray. I can't think of his name right now. Huh? Robert Cray. No, no. The guy that tours with Clapton. Um, He's in that band too, Archangels. I, I can't think of his name right now, but um, I can't think of his name right now. Shit, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, but anyway, no, no, that that Archangels, cool band, dude. Cool yeah. band, fucking cool band. I need. To I get think they only did they only do one album. I think they only did one album, but I need to get it, man, because that song rules. Yeah, I love Charlie Sex, and I had his first album, and I had Steve. Steve uh, Earl Copperhead Rudd. That's a guy. Yeah, Charlie Sexton is a guy that should have been bigger. I think. Oh fuck yeah, I that think, guy could play, dude. He's yeah, tech, but he's I think Texas Southern Rock man. He's, he's Texas, I, think, yeah. I think what hindered him was actually like his looks. His looks he's like he's too good looking, dude. You know, <laughs> I, no, I I'm not like I'm not being like I'm not being like you know funny or anything, but sometimes like the looks kind of like kind of hinder a person's success man like pretty boyish you know and he was he had pinup looks man and but a great player but i think that what's what hindered his career that's what kind of stalled mm-hmm. him, man but he could have been bigger dude honestly man 
I that's what Charlie happened to Sexton, Udo man. too. What's that? That's what happened to Udo too. He's Udo, so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a metal legend. No, Actually, it's like the opposite him. with him. So for they can work both ways. Yeah, be, yeah it's true. You can be the other way. So he was. He he was to watch Peter like Udo. Udo was <laughs> Udo was quite the looker. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Wow, when we get to uh, Al, what's your next one? Um, one of my favorite bands. Uh, from the 90s on Black Crow's Wiser Time Ooh, from, the great, uh, from the great from the great Morica album Morica rules um, dude yeah. dude that to me that's like a masterpiece of what uh, that's like that's a crown jewel of like songs of their catalog I mean they have so many great songs and again man like I saw them this past summer and I saw them last summer and they were definitely like one of the best fucking concerts i saw i saw them twice this year dude. yeah twice rule yeah yeah and like they're all bullsh- they're all like live no bullshit like, yeah. just they don't need no fucking backing tracks none of that crap you know they plug into their amps and just fucking play and that's the way i love it and they kicked the ass bro so and I, fucking what who's the guitar player the brother what's his name Rich, oh, Rich Robinson. Rich, he kicked the fucking ass out of that guy in Australia Dude. going up on the stage. Oh, yeah. Guitar. Yeah. He <laughs> bludgeoned the fucker. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a bludgeon, but he he hit the guy in the chest with the guitar. He didn't do he didn't do the Keith Richards thing and hit him over the head. <laughs> but I don't blame him one down. bit, man. Like I say, we were talking about that. People nowadays, man, well, shit. Fucking could have a knife or something. You man. come on the stage. Yeah, yeah, you come on the stage. Yeah, man. Man. You fucking you don't know, you don't know dime the fuck bag died do. on stage, but dude, come on. That's man. what I mean, dude. It's yeah. like yeah, protect he's, lucky that, he's lucky that was a gentle nudge, man. He could have clocked in the yeah. head with that fucking bitch. I think Bruce Dickinson, when I saw them, did the best though. He he went to the <laughs> yeah, guy, he went like this, come here, come here. And then the guy came up to him and he fucking put him in a chuckle, threw him back to security. <laughs> When I saw the show Iron Maiden, I was fucking Bruce is fucking smart as that. Fuck you, Iron but, Maiden had haters. I love fucking Sinjitsu. <laughs> but why is it Eric Garza P. Jordan? Fuck off. Yeah. I love that song. It, 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 like already sparked the crows, man. Yeah. Not my number four. It, that song sounds like it's already starting in the middle. But you know what I mean? It just I mean, there's no bullshit when that song starts. It's already flowing. Oh, yeah. You know? Dude, the slide guitar, that's amazing. It's just yeah. like an amazing song, man. Every time that comes on, man, like, I just, like, I got to sit back and I just got to be like, ah, oh, man. Dude, it's just like such a song that you want to soak in and great. And then, and Chris Robinson's vocals are incredible. I'm that's all I'm about to say. He sounds yeah. southern, like. You know what an underrated Black Crows album is? War Paint. That's a fucking good album. Dude. I love that album, too. War Paint. I, I, dude, really I, I, honestly, I honestly don't dislike any. I don't. I even albums. like the jam band albums he did before the Frost. Before, you know, I like that shit. Yeah, dude. fucking yep. good. I'm. I'm not a Grateful Dead fan, but fucking they kicked ass. They went into like a what a fucking mm. uh, barn and fucking recorded that shit. That's fucking pretty cool. Andy, what's your next one? Uh, my next one is going to be the title track by Thirty Eight Special, Wild Eyed Southern Boys. That's a great song. Oh wow, good one. Badass song. Great band, oh, dude. Yeah. It really is. I like their dates special. I know that they play their one hit or two hits like crazy, but dude, when you sit down and really throw the throw on an album, a thirty-eight special, I mean, it's not Almond Brothers, it's not Leonard Skinner, no, but you know they got their own identity. Yeah, and it's, they have a pop. They have a pop sensibility. Yeah, their, yeah. Music, that guy's voice know? is but it's, it's like but, southern pop rock is what it is. It's, it's another band. And it's another Van Zant brother. So yeah. Yeah, it's Donnie, it's, Donnie Van Zant, right? Yep. Until they got that guy on that fucking rock and roll strategy album. Who the fuck was that dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna fucking I bought that tape and I go, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> fuck that second chance song. Uh what's your next one, uh Charles? All right, my next one out of South Akron, Devo Whip It. What? No, I'm, I'm playing. No, of course not. But it's not what we throw Kansas and Bob Seeger and know, right? <laughs> you know, Mark's got Rush coming soon. They're from South yeah. Ontario. So, you know, that counts. No. I'm just teasing y'all. I don't hey, I'm with Kansas. I don't it's care. Not. 
It's got fiddle. I love Kansas, you know. You know. Uh, this was wrong. one other one of these newer bands, and we've been making that joke about, well, they're from here, they're from there. This band's from Chicago, but they're a newer band. They're called Green Sugar. Huh. It's called Inner Soul, and I'm going to send that link as well to you guys. It's uh, cool. You'd swear they were from Chicago, Mississippi, not Chicago, Illinois. I don't know if maybe some guys moved to Chicago and, you know, from the side. I don't know a lot about them, but in my research, I checked this song out and I was like, that's that's a good one. I wanted to put some off the beaten path, a couple songs that yeah, I've kind of good. Never heard before. So cool. you know, it's a good representation because, again, we got my bonus tracks. So. Yeah. That would be more standard. But Green Sugar, called Inner Soul. Check that out. One word, Green Sugar. All right, Jerry, you're next, man. And I'm going to take a piss, but I want to hear what your song is first. <laughs> Keep talking about <laughs> it so I can take a piss real quick. Called Goodbye Carolina by a band called the Marcus King Band. You ever hear them? No, I didn't, but that's cool. You know you need to send me a link, too. All right, I'll be right okay. back. <laughs> nah, it's a really cool tune. This guy's got a really good voice. He's a funny looking guy. He kind of looks like Christopher Cross with long hair and short. But man, he, he can belt it out, man. He's got a, he's got a killer band behind him. Um, the album's called Carolina Confessions, man. It's a really good album. They're relatively new. So, uh, you know, look them up, man. Some good Southern rock, some good rock and roll. What's the name of them? Uh, the, Marcus, the Marcus King Band. Okay. Um, they're from Carolina, obviously. It sounds like good by Carolina. But uh, I first heard them on my. Uh, I got this Peloton, and it was one of the songs they put on the, mm -hmm. the fucking list to work out to. I'm like, damn, this is a really good song. And like the last year and a half, I've been listening to it, man. It's a, I really love the song. It's a good tune. Check them out. Yeah, okay, well, you know, Southern Rock does keep on getting better. I mean, it's not dead. It's still, you know, you just have to hunt for it. Just like everything else in rock music, you really need to go out there and look for it because it's not being given to us on MTV or the radio anymore. We got to take upon ourselves to go look for this. So that's what's really cool about doing things like this because, you know, we got a lot of different bands from Charles that I've never heard of that I'm excited to to get into the yeah, links. Yeah, I want to check them out, man. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I sent everybody the links to those two songs. So, yeah, it was, those were kind of surprising finds. And yeah, they were newer groups. Uh, yeah, that's cool, that one, uh, and I don't think the other uh, Crowbar Canes even together, I don't think anymore. But yeah, but still, it's still uh, enjoy yeah. what they do. You know? Yeah, check it out. You know, so it's newer stuff. So that's cool. All right, man. And I get to mine, right? Yep. Then, this yeah, is Rush. I, I know it. Yeah, it's fucking Rush. <laughs> uh, Fucking, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Speed. <laughs> Mr. Speed. No, I'm, I'm going to pick the Allman Brothers, man. It's like uh, Sticks did a great cover of this song. One Way Out. Fucking as One Way Out. I keep it. Dun, 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 yes, sir. Dun, 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 that fucking jams, dude. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Fucking riffs for days. I love that fucking song. Might be old man, I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. That fucking riff just fucking goes off for days. And there goes that jazz influence, that you know? Groove, that groove on that song is just, it's just fucking ear candy, man. So then, uh, Al, what's your next one? Mr. Speed by Kiss. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's got a little uh, green to it, Southern style. A little it does. No, I, I, yeah. I was joking, but the the, the guitar line and I is actually does. a little bit of, has a bit of a Southern rock flavor to it, but it's not Southern rock, obviously. But because they're from fucking uh, what New York. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, uh, I do Zeppelin like Mr. Speed. Dog. Though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not Led Zeppelin Hot Dog. No. <laughs> Please. No. no um, Oh, going Midnight Rider by uh, Allman Brothers Band. Oh, great song! I mean, come on, man. I, I love, I love that song so much, dude. I mean, when I was a kid, hearing that song, uh, Greg Allman's voice just kind of, I don't know, he just mesmerized me, man. It was just like had this, I don't know, man. It was just like this laid back, but it was just, it just made me feel at ease, man. And just, yeah. I don't know, dude. It's just, I can't explain it, but and then hearing him do that live. Like uh, ten feet away from me was 
like I, it, it was just like you know a religious experience dude and i don't know i love the Allman brothers band so much that's my number three midnight rider well i knew one of you guys would pick that one that's why i went for one way out <laughs> yeah midnight yeah. rider is an amazing fucking track amazing that's, a great, song, man. that's yeah. a great pick dude thank you yeah we, we go to you andy yeah um i'm um i'm almost finished with this side as well i'm going to go with whiskey myers Broken Witness Serenade. Love that song. Dang, you guys, are going, you guys are going for some good shit, man. I like this, man. I love that song. We're, That's... Not, all, we're not all picking Leonard Skinner. It's a, <laughs> it's a sad song, and it's written so well. And 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 um, I forgot the guy's name from Whiskey Myers, but, man, I love his voice. It's Is his name of... Myers? No. No. <laughs> no. no, that's the name of the band. <laughs> but um, yeah. you guys hey, need Mark, to send me links to these groups that I've never heard of. Al, hey, Mark, Charles, the, and and what's your hey name? Mark, the list isn't Andy. over yet about Skinner. So. <laughs> oh God, I love Leonard Skinner, but the thing is, I had a couple of Leonard Skinner songs in here until I saw people picking Leonard Skinner all the time. Yeah, James West. It's uh, gonna get picked, man. It's gonna it, get picked. I know, but I knew you. Like I, like I always say, I knew you guys would pick Skinner. I did have Skinner, but I had to change it because it's like want, doing a thrash album, not putting the Metallica song. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to oh. give people like uh like different tracks, you know, so they go check it out and just not go listen to a Skinner greatest hits album. And to think outside like, the box. It's like, it's like doing yeah. it's like doing a Brit it's like doing a Brit pop list and I put an Oasis on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you want people to think outside the box instead of just Skinner Skinner. You want people to say, you know what, maybe Kansas is Southern Rock. I'll 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 take some Samantha uh, no, Fox. I'm Brit Pop. Do you have fiddle? What she sings, <laughs> I always see it as her boobs. But uh, all right. <laughs> all right, uh, uh Charles, what's your next one? Well, I'm gonna be back off that beaten path back down to path of people know and i'm with team zz top counts that's right and i got zz top arrested while driving while blind yeah song, beautiful song. beautiful See, oh, yeah. i knew I'd, i i knew i'd have charles on my side here i knew my boy would come through for me right there you go they do count <laughs> that's yeah, right. zz top so I'm about me. i love oh, zz too, top yeah. man <laughs> Who's hey Mark? Charles, are you going? Are you going to Rock and Pod? Yes, yes, he is. All right, so I, 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 I haven't booked a ticket yet, but I'm gonna go. And when I go, me and you got to share a drink together, brother. Yeah, really? Sir. Absolutely. What the fuck, Mark? No, Mark. <laughs> what the fuck? And, and, yeah, Why but, am I always like not thought of on anybody? It's like we want to hang out, with drinks, and, Mark. and Mark is just sitting there in the background in the corner going. Nobody loves me, man. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, hey, me, me and Charles would be like sharing a drink. Hey, Mark, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> it's like, nah, fuck, man. man. Why can't we all hang out together and have some whiskey? What the fuck? Right, well, man. <laughs> hey, you, hey not... listen, you guys, listen, you guys are going to be hanging out together. I haven't booked my ticket yet. So oh, I'm, I got to get my ass in gear, bro, and get down there. <laughs> it's anyway. a 10 arm thing, Mark. You wouldn't quite. <laughs> I love fucking dude. My favorite Death <laughs> Leopard is fucking the first EP till fucking Hysteria. Okay, even with the nine arm. But I love the first when Rick Allen had both arms. It's my favorite. If you ever <laughs> listen to my show, I play a lot of the fucking live from the fucking fucking that box set. Fucking the early years, I play a lot of that live shit from them. That's what, and you've heard hey, me listen. play that live shit, Charles. <laughs> Just teasing, That's why I always, I always laugh. I always laugh at that stupid fucking meme or whatever. Oh, if uh, if so, what, what's that meme that says if you're not drumming to death oh, with one you're, arm, you're an you asshole. Suck. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm, I'm like, well, you're an asshole because the best death left is with two arms, dude. <laughs> you're a fucking prick. Well, I, I, I listen to high and dry on both arms, and when I get the stereo, I'm only one. <laughs> it's easier to drive to hysteria and beyond. No, I can't drive because I'm always got one arm on the wheel <laughs> and the drum while you're driving. You, know, you can't do it on. 
Right, anyway, next? Back, I'm, back I'm to confused Michelle. right now. Who's next? I can't drive one. Uh, yeah. Listen to it because I'm always pressing the brake or the gas. Just pressing. The brake. Charles, Charles, you went last, right? Yes, Jerry. Okay, sorry. Jerry, your turn. Uh, Bias, have you ever seen the rain by CCR? <sighs> Great fucking tune. Yeah. That's, That's not fucking San that. Francisco, I dude. That's a bit <laughs> I don't consider Southern Rock, but I, I, I don't know, dude. It's not Southern Rock, man. Next. He loves the song. He loves the song. He he loves the song. But I like what Charles said. He's picking Southern Rock by God. You know. <laughs> Fuck it. That's fucking by you. That's fucking. Cheers. 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 I ran out of alcohol and I'm fine. DCR. All right. Then I get to. I'm you know, some of this right here. I'm, wear, I'm the only one wearing a Southern Rock shirt here because I saw them twice. The hey, they're crow. from South Queens and South. Yeah, whatever. NASA, uh, that's Texas. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we oh, get... from Texas. Why can't this count? It is Southern Third Rock. South, by God. Mr. But, uh, California. I'm going you know? to go Houston, from one of my Houston, favorite. we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is my all-time favorite song by the Black Crows. Sometimes Salvation. Yes. Great one, dude. My yeah. God. Chris Robinson's voice on that is just so fucking amazing. His performance is just... See, now I'll, ha now I'll have a drink with you at Rock and Pod, Mark. See, oh, that's how we're good. <laughs> well, you might have a drink with me on my number one. <laughs> oh, Okay. All right. I might so even, you, maybe, depending on your number one, I might even snort whiskey with you. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, Chris said they're going to get a table for me to do that in front of everybody. <laughs> I asked him <laughs> if he's going to supply the whiskey or I have to. But uh, there you go. Chris, Chris Senzak, if you're watching, you say you watch the freeform uh, videos. Uh, if you watch this, us here, and Chris, you've been doing the Geeks of the Week. Because I share our fucking shit. But the last three weeks, dude, it's Mark and Jerry with Charles BS sessions. It's not the Mark and Jerry BS sessions anymore. So fucking give Charles a, sh a shout out, bitch. <laughs> I love you, Chris. But the last three weeks on Geeks of the Week, you fucking skip Charles. This is me off because we did change the name. He's there. And it says it when I share your shit. <laughs> All right, man. So well, then we get to yours, uh, Al, your number one. Two, right? My number two. Yeah. two. Number two? Oh, okay, two. well then, yeah, your number two. Uh, you know, hey, listen, man. <laughs> um, my number two, I guess, would be considered the would be considered the stairway of heaven, sweat stairway to heaven of Southern Rock. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Right. I know it, what it it's, is. It's, it's, it's what everybody yells out at concerts and all that shit. It's got oh my free God. bird. I knew you free yeah. bird. Somebody I had to say that, right? Yes. 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 I knew somebody would say free bird. What are the best guitar solos of all time? Listen, I, I you, how could you have a Southern Rock list and not have that? It's the stairway to heaven of Southern. What, dude, over here in, in the New York area, is, they always have the fucking top 1,000 classic rocks and stairway to heaven is always number one number two is usually free bird so fucking dude it's the stairway to heaven of southern rock free it bird is. scattered I i'm being fucking you know whatever dude uh, i'm being typical but here have I, a love, drink I love the version from uh one more from the road yeah, yeah, dude. Dude. Oh, yeah. the live version oh, my dog ate yeah. the cover of that but i still got the vinyl yeah, I got that vinyl. I love that vinyl. That that whole thing. A, a yeah. vinyl is fucking amazing. But, there's, but that's not my number one. I just obviously like you guys know who my favorite Southern Rock band is now. That's gonna be my number one. But I had to put this at number two. It's it's it is a stairway to heaven of a, a fucking Southern Rock. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I, I know everybody can be burnt out on the song, but that live version is incredible. Charles. Oh, I'm never burned out of it. I just knew what of you motherfuckers to pick it, so I didn't yeah. pick it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the fucking obvious one to pick it. So, uh, let it be. I <laughs> let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Andy, what's your Getty Lee? Song. Getty yeah. Lee. Getty um, <laughs> my number five on uh, track two is the Charlie Daniels band. The Georgia went down. The, the so Georgia went down. The Georgia went down. <laughs> the, devil, 
The devil went down to Georgia. Did you the Georgia, Georgia drink went, it, down to Kansas. <laughs> it went down to Kansas. <laughs> it all depends. It all depends. Love- no, but um, I love all y'all, man. But um, the thing is, is that I really love it when when he was on Urban Cowboy and he performed it on the stage and all dancing so fast, you know. And the dude's just fucking fiddling, you know. I love that song. Like, at Gillies. Yeah. Correct. See, with Texas is down south there. Mark Seng turned that accent on. And, you know, they have a Gillies in fucking Vegas, time. Charles. Get the fuck to Vegas, dude. I'll come down there and party with that's you. That's more of my speed, for sure. Yeah. Well, fucking Texas party, dude. Cool. It's good. It's the cool thing fun. is, I don't understand why Al doesn't want to have a drink with me. You're fucking, we're the rush fucking tards in this fucking, <laughs> fucking <laughs> shit dude, here. Gonna, We will, man. Trust me. All right. But, uh, Charles, what's your next one? Sawyer, Sawyer right here says that we will have a drink together. All right, man, cool. <laughs> um, all right, get out of here. I think I heard you mention this song. And I heard it during that research. I forgot about this damn song. And uh, that was one of these songs. I knew the song, didn't know the title, but I remembered it. And then it's from an old Elvin Bishop there. Fooled around and fell in love. Let's just do that. Great nice fucking slow song. Groove. Yeah. Man, the song. I was like grooving to it. Elvin today. Bishop, huh? Yeah, I forgot. Mickey, all about I picked Elvin song. Bishop too. I know, but you picked this one. I picked this one instead. I thought, I forgot about this song. I was like, oh, yeah, this is a damn good groove right here. Mickey like Thomas, it. dude. Mickey Thomas could rule, rules, man. Even we yeah. built the city rules. Come on. I won't go that far, but uh, I will say yeah. this song yeah. pretty good. I will play that song at our wedding. We built yeah. the city. We built this city. You're right. No. No. We oh, all up. I I love love love. Love. <laughs> hey, you know what we played at our fucking wedding? Our first dance was fucking "Time Stands Still" by Rush. Hey, well, that's you know. Yep. Yeah. should hey. play safety dance. Oh, <laughs> You know, as a kid, I wanted that album so bad because of that song. But then when I heard it later, I go, that was the only good song on that album. <laughs> so I'm glad my mom didn't buy it for me. But uh, so fooled around and fell in love. Mickey Thomas rules, dude. Uh, fucking those three albums he did with uh, Jefferson Starship. Amazing. I love that song, Sarah. Sarah. Kind of exactly. Uh, I like it. Don't get, don't Jane, get Jane, me keeping a hoopla over here. Jane and Save Your Love. <laughs> Save Your Love is the best song he's ever done because Craig Chiquito on that lead on Save Your Love. I like that song. Save Your Love for me. That solo by Craig, though, it's just like on fire. We did do a review on the Freeform Rock podcast on that album. So check it out. But uh, so what's your next one, Jerry? Born in My Pride by the Black Crows. Good song. Yes. Beautiful Very good song. record. Um, Love it. That fucking song. album. That song and album rules, man. Yeah. yeah, there's been several songs from that album. Southern Harmony Musical Companion. We did do a review on Freeform Rock Podcast. <laughs> Check it out. With the great Lee. I can't say his last name, so I'm saying the great Lee. Gersman? Mr. Tucked In Shirt, yes. He's sending me a lot of pictures from Pinterest lately. Cool. <laughs> He's like on a Pinterest I got a, kick. I got, I got a friend request from the fake Lee a while ago, but I guess yeah. the, the real Lee doesn't like me, so I don't know. <laughs> the real Lee it really likes everybody. Just, just Yeah. But then I'm going to get to my number one, which I, Al picked earlier in the episode. Your Green number grass. one? Yeah. We're at number two still. Well, I'm on number one because my Sometime Salvation was my number two. Oh, I p- okay. Look, I picked Bad Book. My number 11 was Government Mule. Number 10 was Devil De- Went Down to Georgia. Number nine, Elvin Bishop, Traveling Shoes. Can't see, can't you see Marshall T- Tucker Band? Uh, did, did I miss the mu- Marshall Tucker Band? Yeah. yeah. No, okay, that, that, that was my number nine. I think you had it. Well, that's your number two now. There my number go. two already picked number two, Sometime Salvation. Or but my power, number, number one, so nine. you guys could go after this. But yeah. I already picked it, Green Grass and High Tides by the Outlaws. I That's remember true. first hearing that on, um, what's that guy's, Jim Ladd. 
he played that song. And I was going, oh my Jim God, this guitaring is rules. You guys should check him out on Deep Tracks on Sirius XM. Fucking Jim Rad. Jim Ladd, yeah, he's still on there. Lord nope. have mercy. You know, fucking Jim Ladd rules. So that's my number one. And uh, you guys could go around and shit, whatever. I fucking probably skipped a song because I'm drunk. Oh shit, Robbie Gould missed that. But uh, let's get to you, Al. What's your number one? Fucking Almond Brothers band. And the song is the classic Whipping Post. That's my number one, dude. Yeah. I knew I mean, one of you motherfuckers would pick that track. Come on. I mean, dude, that song just fucking... I, to me, Almond Brothers band are the kings. They are they're, they were the originators. The, 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 the first ones, dude. And... I mean, I could have just, like I said earlier in the in the show, I could have just been like, yeah, listen, man, here's my top fucking list, man. Just put Fillmore East and be fucking done with it. Yeah, you I know? need to get that album, man. I mean, that album is just fucking, that's the blueprint. I mean, if nobody has that album in their collection, you're a fool. If you, you know, you, if you're not, a, you're not a music lover, you know. Um, I, have eat a pe- I have Eat a Peach. Eat a Peach is awesome too. Yeah, I have. As that far one. as like studio yeah. studio albums, yeah. Eat a Peach, you know, Brothers and Sisters, you know, shit oh, like that. Great shit. I have that digitally. Yeah, but but dude, but dude, I feel more East. You gotta have that, man. It's I just, need that. I need it's that essential. Badly. It's essential. So whip, whipping post, and especially that live version is incredible. Um, it takes up I think a whole album size. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it does. It's, I, that's my number one, man. All the brothers, I mean, all the brothers, man, will always be my number one. I, the, they, they, they pound. I mean, if you're gonna have a Skinner versus all the brothers, man, don't even bother having me on because I'm gonna pick all the brothers. So I, you know I would be, I mean? I'd be with you on that too. So that's my pick. But what Andy? about you, Andy? Yeah, my um, my number six song on side two ends this album epically. Um, Leonard Skinner, the free bird, ends mine. It has to. It's the. Uh, that's a great a, way to end an album. It's a, that's a great, great, way to end an album. great song. It also ends their first song, their first album, you know, pronounced Leonard Skinner. And free bird, I mean, it's beautiful from beginning to end. It, it, it starts off as a nice ballad and it ends like a fucking barn burner, man. Yeah. yeah. Like so, I said, it built, like I said, it builds up like a like a like a stairway to heaven. Yep. I like it better than stairway to heaven, actually. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Yep. Then, 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 st- then that means stairway to heaven is your free bird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Charles. What's yours? I'm gonna, well, it's not my number. Boy, that one. joke fell flat. Yeah. <laughs> but. Anyway, I'm gonna end my, my I'm gonna end my album with the Charlie Daniels band, but not the Devil Went Down to Georgia. Oh, every motherfucker picks that, as Mark would say. Yeah, the South's gonna do it again. Mm. Oh shit! Yeah. Check that song out. There was lots of shout outs to all the other Southern rock bands at the time. Check that one out. It's a little upbeat number to end my album and yeah, my man. bonus. My bonus tracks are just listening to Leonard Skinner's Street Survivor back. Uh, and mm. then you really have the best. See, I would be on the team Skinner on the debate. So I'm I'm team, I'm more Skinner. Now I do okay. appreciate the almond okay. brothers. Though. I appreciate the almond, but I'm I'm I am more Skinner. I got the original and, uh, album coming. I didn't well, put like Skinner I, on there. I didn't put him well, on. Like, I, like I said before. Like I said before, Skinner is more of a pure Southern rock band. Almond Brothers is a bit more of a melding of like different yeah. styles. Yeah, you know. I don't even really compare yeah. those two. Oh yeah, they're completely different. I don't think there's, you know, like Statesboro Blues is great from Almond Brothers. I mean, there's so many good ones. So yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I think... and, and the same with Skinner, bro. I mean, Skinner is fucking uh, dude. Come on, man. I mean, they could be, in my opinion, of just pure Southern rock. I think pure Southern rock, they are the kings. They are the fucking kings, dude. Um, Pure Southern rock, there's no doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. I mean, I didn't put them on my, what would be my album, because everybody will. And I I think, well, just listen to Skinner. Just like you say, listen to Almond Brothers, Fillmore East. Listen to Skinner. Yeah. Uh, One more from 
Road is probably the best one to listen to if you've Great never listened to Skinner my, at all. But it's I put nice Fillmore East above mix. that. That one, for, one, one more for the road is number two. Okay, well, we all have them opinions, but yeah, I'm do. just saying at the collection. Yep. You know, like, that's a good one to listen to if you're not have not listened to Skinner, who I don't know who the hell that would be, but if you haven't. That's a good one. Kind of like the red you know, and the blue from the Beatles. Uh, can I can I just say something? To to. Can I just say something? I do have a friend and and, and I always fucking rib him for this shit, dude. It's like he loves all of us, but he completely dismisses fucking scanners, bro. He's wow. he's like, uh dude, I don't like them. I, I and I'm like, dude, you're fucking out of your mind. It's, it's just one of those things that like you're just being a contrarian. You know, it's just like, whatever, dude. You know, all right, listen, you like the Owen Brothers better, that's fine. But to, to completely dismiss Scanner as like a fucking great band, dude, I'm like, come on, man, you're you're just being an idiot, you know. Mm -hmm. So Donato from Staten Island, hi, <laughs> <laughs> you prick fuck. <laughs> They're like one of the best American bands, period. <laughs> Leonard Skinner. Yeah. You do a whole show about Skinner. All right, Jerry, your turn. Um, I'll end it with Midnight Rider from the Allman Brothers Band. Uh, like Al mentioned before, it's a great fucking tune. So we talked about it already, so uh, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, man. So <laughs> who has more picks? Because I don't have any more picks. Uh, my, well, any more. well like, like Charles said before, see, my bonus tracks is just like put on uh, Fillmore East and yeah, I'm good. That's my bonus tracks. <laughs> I agree with you, man. Uh, Andy, so, you have bonus tracks? Yes, I got a lot of bonus tracks because this is where I'm going to make oh, it go through them, man. with the Almond Brothers, Leonard Skinner. All of them are by, by those two bands. I wanted to pick more, but I wanted to stretch out on the album and just put one per, per um, album. Okay. But I'm going to go with a Leonard Skinner, Give Me Three Steps. Love that song. I love that whole story. It's just hilarious, you know. He's like, yeah. I'm sorry, mister, I didn't even kiss her. I don't want no trouble with you. Love that song. Also, 38 Special is a really great jam. And so is the uh, Ballad of Curtis, of Curtis Blow. Yeah. I love that song. You know, um, Ronnie Van Zant was a very underrated writer he was such a great writer and people take that for for granted because you know they always say oh then they're skinnered rocks but man their lyrics were just fantastic and on the other spectrum you know i got to talk about allen brothers jessica is one of the finest um instrumentals ever um brothers and sisters was the first allen brothers album I ever bought. I remember being in my apartment when I got my first apartment just just jamming that endlessly. So that yeah, one yeah. and my um uncle was a um was a big eat um eat a peach fan. So Mountain Jam. Love Mountain Jam. If you want to oh, hear Mountain Jam, Mountain Jam dude, that shit's on two sides. I know. <laughs> it takes up two sides of an album. <laughs> Mountain Jam is like the epic of epics. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the band was okay. When is this song over? <laughs> but, but I love it. And, um, you know, a very underrated um, album. If you if you listeners out there try to listen to, to feel more easy, you think it might be a little bit too much for you, maybe try um, Wipe the Windows and Fill Up the Gas. That's another double album by the Allen Brothers that the songs are more, I guess, radio-friendly. If you don't like the long jams, that's also a really good double live album by them as well. And recently, I have picked up um, Almond Brothers, the best of the Almond Brothers, the Epic Years. And that, too, stretched out in the 90s, where they were a little lost there in the 80s, where, where Greg Almond did. Yeah. On, when they came back with Warren Hayes, man, they really started to fuck it up again um yeah for my language there but they really did so dude, you can was, cuss all you want on here dude <laughs> um but that was my um take on my extra tracks it had to be leonard skinner and it had to be allen brothers charles yeah the, the, to me okay, okay. to me those two are like right there man they're, they're the top of the heat 
you know, you can't go wrong with either one of them. You know, it's just like, you know, one time, you know, you know, Skinner might be you know, my number one, like one week and owners might be my number one another week. It's just, they're both great, man. And you can't go, there's no wrong answer with them. You know? Yeah. Charles, you have bonus tracks? I already did it. It was all of Skinner Street Survivors back. But, there you uh, go. but uh, I'm proud Mark didn't put Jackal. Who? Jackal. Jackal? I hope you don't. Oh, Lord. I, hope you don't. I love Jackal, yeah. though. I know you. <laughs> Come on, Maybe man. Maybe you put the sun down on me or whatever that. What is that one? The Lumberjack. Oh, Sunshine oh, sun. down on me or whatever. I like the Lumberjack down, down song, on me. Down on me. Down on me. I like She Loves My Cock. <laughs> oh, she loves terrible. my cock. Come terrible. On, but yeah, I, I, you got bonus tracks, so maybe. You... Well, I didn't pick any That's bonus tracks. Okay, Jerry, so no, you have any bonus know. tracks? <laughs> Jerry, stop watching I'm the game. Good. No, I'm good. Yeah, you're watching the game at third and one. No, but, I'm, I'm, I'm not watching the game. It's good. I'm good. All right, man. But I don't have any bonus tracks either, but I'm just going to ask each one of you individually. I'll start with you, Al. What is the greatest Southern rock band of all time? Oh. All my brothers, man. That's for me. All, all around to me, even 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 Leonard Skinner in interviews has said all my brothers started it all, dude. And they're the ones that's the top of the heap for me, man. They're the top of the mountain. So Andy, what is it? Allen Brothers. Allen Brothers. Charles. I have to even disagree with Leonard Skinner because Leonard, by God, Skinner does it for me. But I respect the Allman Brothers immensely because, again, I look at them more than just pure Southern rock. So, yeah. Skinner just, you know, it's like uh, Black Sabbath, the Judas Priest, or whatever. Who started it? Who perfected it? It's just how you, you interpret it. <laughs> that's a that, that that's a great analogy, it's dude. Perfect. I gotta agree with you on that. I gotta agree with you on that. Where Sabbath coming in, it, and like a couple of years later, Judas Priest, the same yeah. thing, Allen Brothers, Charles, 74. Charles coming through with the knowledge, bro. Mm -hmm. Let's try every now and then. See, so, he's uh, got a see, he's got a stinking cap on. See the cap on his head? Yeah. <laughs> I got right. my thinking cap on too. It's called the Niners. But <laughs> ah, you're a fucking get out of here, bro. Cowboys fan. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> So Jerry, what is your favorite all time? Go store, rock band? go store some whiskey, um, bro. <laughs> oh, I will. Trust me. It's Skinner, hands down, Skinner. I mean, there you go. I go with the what Allman Brothers. Mark, man. Mark, Mark, Mark is a tiebreaker. Go ahead, Mark. Allman Brothers. I love me some Leonard Skinner, but those fucking jams that fucking Allman <laughs> Brothers did, Skinner never did that. It's like they have that Freebird. Freebird is majorly great. But then you have One Way Out. You have Melissa. You have all these jams they did live. The fucking One for the Road for Leonard Skinner is great, but Fillmore East kicks that album's ass. It's like, you I'm, know, the Allman Brothers, even, even Leonard Skinner, like you said, Al, picked the Allman Brothers as their favorite band. You know what's fun? You, you know what's funny, though? Um, <clears throat> Calling the Allman Brothers a jam band, even they didn't like they didn't like that term. They yeah. they preferred they preferred to be called a band that jammed. Yeah. So that was like their kind of thing. But yeah, I mean they 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 really started that jam band culture. Uh, well, I don't know. It could be either between them and Grateful Dead, but um, Grateful Dead and you know, but they were predated Allman Brothers band a little bit. But anyway, those two bands, you know. They really, those two bands really created that jam band culture, you know. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, dude, listen, man, Scanner, Allman Brothers, I mean, they're both fucking awesome. So it's, I, I'm not, I can't argue with either one. It's so. like 1A and 1B, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go, man. There you go. All right, man. So that was our, uh, episode on the Southern Rock songs. But, uh, before we go, man, we got a lot of, uh, people in the group. I mentioned a lot of your names out there. If you haven't subscribed to fucking our channel or even watched 30 seconds of any videos, 
I'm about to become a bust heads, bro. Yeah, you guys need to start <laughs> watching this shit because we're entertaining. Like 30 Jerry seconds. said. That's it. 30, just 30 seconds. Give us a view, man. Subscribe, man. We're almost to 200, man. We're trying to get to a thousand. We're not greedy. We'll take increments, but we can start getting it, man. Start start getting on here, man. We do this for free, but we do want to make money. Like Jerry said earlier, we want to make some fucking cash. You know, you give that guy that Britney Spears fucking leave Britney alone shit fucking major money, and he don't uh, give us fucking any money. I'll go ahead and subscribe right as soon as we get off. You already subscribed, didn't you? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I just want to say thank you, guys. But before we go, Al, pimp your shit. Be cool every podcast out. I have my Facebook group. I have my YouTube channel. Um, I haven't been to any concerts lately. so. Uh, but you, if you want to see concert footage, check my channel out. Pretty soon I'll be adding more content uh, as far as like shows go. But, Mark, I want to thank you, Charles, Jerry, and Andy, for having me on your shows. I really love you guys, man. I appreciate you guys having me on your show. It's not, it's not lost on me, dude. I really, really from the bottom of my heart, man, I love you guys, dude. And, and hopefully I can make it Likewise. out. To, uh, I really hope I can make it out to rock and pot and hang out with all you guys, dude. I, mean, I really, really would love that. So thank you, man. Yeah, I hope you make it out to rock and pot too, man, because uh, we got to teach Bushy how to drink. <laughs> Fucker, giving a devil horns, throwing up a fucking Jack Daniels. What the fuck, dude? Evan Williams, man. Evan Williams. But Andy, pimp your shit. Yeah. Um. On Tuesday, I am going to be having our um our football podcast with Jerry as my co-host. It's called the um um, um Red Iron Smackdown. We're in week fifteen. It's a good show. I really enjoy doing that with Jerry. It's a it's, yeah, it's a good fun. Time. And on Wednesday on the Black Spinner Circle, we're doing Jerry's picks. Uh, we are going to be doing Pink Floyd's The Division Bell. So that's going to be fun to do. And um, that's going to be my last episode on Black Spinner Circle for the rest of the year. I'm going to close it out with that one. And because, you know, Christmas and New Year's is coming back. But um, but I'll be back strong in the next year. And I got some new topics coming up, which are going to be interesting. And I'll put it out like always. And, you know, I've really been enjoying my panel. And I wanted to say, you know, we're close to the end of the year. And I wanted to thank all of y'all because y'all have really made Black Spinner Circle podcast so great. Thank you so much. And also for Kate that's watching out there, she's bringing so many people to join Black Spinner Circle. We're already at over 700 members, which is great. But I got to work on my YouTube channel because i've only got i got like 57 subscribers to that but like almost 50 views on each video so they're all watching it but you know i just need to get more subscribers to work on it hey sometimes it's just that people just view this shit without subscribing it's yeah it's a it's an listen it's just the way it is Um, and um the viewership doesn't even bother me because i have fun just talking to friends about music so that's the main part for me. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed doing this. And it's going to be a whole year that I've done this on every Wednesday on Black Spinner Circle. And then and then doing it on the BS sessions with Mark, Jerry, and Charles. So this is fun. I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, it's like we're all experts, and I love it. That's yeah, it. We just like we're all, we like. We're all legends in our own mind. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Jerry, what just happened in the NFC West? Did they win? We won the division, bitch. Cool. Niners, bitch. Purdy, two awesome. and zero. Oh. Hmm? We're first rookie quarterback to beat a Super Bowl champion and a Super Bowl winning coach in the first two games. Okay, dude, Brady's almost forty-five. Come on. Okay, but we just beat fucking Seattle. <laughs> you know, you know. Look at our record. He was like almost eighty. Look at our record against Seattle with Russell Wilson. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. We fucking, this is the first time we swept Seattle in years. This is fucking great. You know, we are a sports show. We yeah. don't talk as much sports as we should. We should start talking to, when baseball season comes in, you know, we're going to talk more sports because I think we're more <laughs> baseball fans than we are football fans. Oh, well, the playoffs are right around the corner here in football. So, oh, yeah. 
No, I'm so, more man. of a football fan, but my team sucks. Well, so your team, really your team. To... Well, you got my team. team. He got rapist on your team. <laughs> he did not do that. That's hey, he didn't call, rape man. I got Ohio State. He didn't rape go, anybody. Go Michigan, Charles. Char- 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 all right, guys, I got to run. Y'all Charles, Charles, hey, world- Jerry, say goodbye, man. Bye, man. Charles take is in easy. World Cup mode right now. All right. That's right, France. All right, man. Take it easy, guys. Yeah. Thank you All guys right, for guys. being on the show. Subscribe, share, <laughs> and just be cool to people, man. God bless. Later, guys. Yeah, nice. I love you guys, man. Bye, guys. Bye. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.